Welcome to Kind of Funny's DCEU <laughs> in review. I'm Tim Geddes. That's Nick Scarpino. That is super great. Release the Snyder Cut. It's Kevin Kowal, We've had to be Andy silent Cortez. on this show about the Snyder Cut for too we long. We had to be silent. It's an embarrassment. You didn't, it wasn't the first words out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah. DC, Warner Brothers, you rolled the dice. You let the train out of the station. Where is the ending? All I right, agree. where is it? <laughs> I agree, Greg. And where, when are we doing Lord of the Rings in yes, review? Exactly. God damn it! Phenomenal this is the franchise. deal. This is the deal that I heard. Get out of the way, Kevin. Either be part of it or get out. Two DC, Warner Brothers, franchises. you're cowards. You're cowards. Release it. Release the standard because I want to see it for this movie. What? I think this was. This the was I think this was. Oh, this is before. This yeah. is before they were like. This is what yeah. everyone's asking for: oh, is more of shit. this movie. Well, more. I mean, you wait till you see <laughs> it three hours of Batman v <laughs> Superman next week, guys. We got a good it's fucking really month ahead of us. Is it three hours? And ask a lot more. The, oh yeah, we're doing the. We're, I don't think we're doing the. We're doing the extend uh, ultimate fuck edition. You, <laughs> fuck you! It's my time. This <laughs> is my revenge for all the movies you made me watch. Josh Makuga sucks. Josh Makuga sucks. Josh Makuga sucks. He sucks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is that. DCEU in review. That's right. The with DC it. Never go away. <laughs> Extended so Universe? Tight. Greg, is yeah. that what this is? Expanded, right? Expanded, expanded Universe, universe. Oh, the DC I Expanded. I hated this. I, was, I never understood the <laughs> EU. Why I put that in there? Yeah. You know what I mean? DCU, Because eh? you don't yeah. want two Cs. There, I mean, we already C-C? talked about the DC. It extended. Oh, extended. extended. DCU. Oh, yeah, that's, that's why. Yeah, DCCU. CC, mm-mm, no touch. I don't even need it. It's just DCU. Like, I mean, people aren't that stupid. It's the movie universe. We get it. Well, they'll get another shot. I'm never running uh, around yelling about the comic all of it anyway. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> We're going to be doing all of the DCEU movies uh, leading into a couple things. It's going to be kind of like we did originally with MCU in review, where we did Black Panther uh, kind of in it leading face. into uh, Infinity War. So we're going to be doing this. But then we got Batman v Superman. Dawn of Justice Ultimate Edition yeah. <laughs> next week. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, then we, we got Super or Suicide Squad leading into Birds of Prey because that feels like it makes a little sure. bit of sense. <laughs> then we're just going to keep on going. Dawn eventually, we'll get to Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman 1984, 1984, which I'm very excited about. Me too. Me too. Uh, but today, we are talking, or you can get the show live, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny, roosterteeth.com. You can listen to it as a podcast by searching for kind of funny reviews. Uh, you can get the show ad free by going to patreon.com slash kind of Kind of funny and writing in your reviews in haiku form for haiku in review. Uh, today we're talking about Man of Steel, released on June fourteenth, twenty thirteen, which kind of blew my mind when I looked at that. I thought it was much older, like, but then I think about it, seven <laughs> years is that's still that's a long, a long time. Long right? time that's a problem, right? Yeah. The other day I it's, saw something came out in twenty sixteen. I was like, oh, it was like a year and a half ago. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no long time, four long years time. ago. Time keeps going. Directed. By Zack Snyder. It's crazy what they've done with those seven years, you know? When other companies dead? with a little bit longer have <laughs> done so much more. <laughs> Zack Snyder made his feature film debut in 2004 with a remake of the 1978 horror film Dawn of the Dead. Since so then, good. he was okay. directed... James Gunn screenplay, right? I think yes, so. Yes, it is. Yeah. What a movie, man. What That's a really movie. Good. You ever see that really movie? No. Never Dawn of the Dead? Movie. Let's, let's do the really Dead. Let's do the Dead. Let's do the Dead. Let's do the Let's do the Dead series. That's a fun one. It's dope. So dope. Uh, he also did 300, so Watchmen, Sucker Punch, as well as this movie and Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Justice League in 2017. Kind Let's of. See how all was. right. Kind of. On the Justice League. Asterix. Put an asterisk on the record, all right? Mm-hmm. Surprise, Barry Bonds Wikipedia says here doesn't know anything about this. You know, Wikipedia says it's true. He got the wrong so deal. You just know. let him have it. I don't want to just let him go. Let him go. <laughs> Last week he was so depressed when we made him watch Bad Boys. <laughs> this is his happy place. I don't want the plot to come. I can uh, the plot's going to come it. hard, man. Uh, you budget. can smell something out of this suit. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have beer? Of two- I haven't had recap juice in a long time. Oh, oh, God. God. A, recap, recap a budget juice. of $258 million, box office of $668 million, and a runtime of two hours and 23 minutes. And it flies by. This is this oh. is like just like him. Like a bird, like a plane. It took me four forward. hours to watch this. Movie. <laughs> uh, it was great. This man of steel. This I kept rewinding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't so just see all the intricacies of the plot. <laughs> man, look at them bombing this one street in Smallville over and over, over and again. Over. That's hey, here's my thing. Real talk before we get to the plot, what we thought of this movie. I enjoyed this leagues more than I thought I was going to. I think the context of superhero movies since then have kind of given us a lot of different styles and different uh, types of movies, different genres of movies. I like this one's commitment to being a bit more artsy. I don't think it always works. I mm-hmm. think that it's way too dull, and I think that all the the big flaws that this movie has, including Kent, uh, the the dad being like Jonathan Kent, 
I'm I'm just I'm just gonna, I'm die, gonna die now. For the dog. Doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. I feel like he the dies movie, for his son, sir. The movie kind of lacks a a B plot, and it's just kind of like just Amy Adams is just doing things a lot that just kind of doesn't make sense. Where him finding her makes sense. Her finding him. Makes no sense at all. Great reporter. She should be uh, a reporter. Hey, damn, juice. damn good reporter. Uh, but but all that said, it's like I like that this movie is a little yes. untraditional in terms of like how it's paced and edited, where the flashbacks are constantly like just filling things in, and I I feel like it works. I feel like it works really well. I like seeing the the final. There's no action in this movie until the final 45 minutes, and it just keeps going. And I think it's choreographed pretty. Pretty well, uh, especially compared to what I thought initially. Uh, when I remember, I remember the th- first time watching it, which was like what, a year after Avengers, mm-hmm. and that was the was, first time you'd seen Man of Steel. That's when it came out. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, yeah. I, that's mm-hmm. this came out a year after Avengers, wow. right? Twenty twelve to twenty thirteen. Crazy! What a difference those two movies yeah, have. Yeah, totally. And for me, it was like this felt like Thor, and with Thor. There's a lot of similarities, right? Of like, hey, we're off world for a bit. Town. Now we're in a small town. There's like some action shit going yeah. on on some streets. And I remember leaving Man of Steel and just being like, man, I had no expectations for Thor. And I kind of enjoyed it sure. leaving it. With this one, I was like, Superman should do better. I didn't really like this. If I can stop you, I think that you can. context is, and this is why you'll be getting a four and a half hour dissertation on this movie. <laughs> context <laughs> is so incredibly important to this. Because, and I know Nick's with me on this, and I know you are too. But if it might be hard if you're watching this now modernly to forget what the trailers were like. Oh. When those first two no. trailers, one narrated by Jonathan Kent, one by jor came yeah. out, I remember watching that and tearing up and being like, they're finally going to nail it. Yep. They're going to make the Superman movie. And so then to go there and not get that movie, that's one of the main reasons I think so many people are like, I I did not, I, I myself included, where I went and saw it and I took a year off. I watched it once, and then I, I think I didn't you see it. Just went into the wilderness. <laughs> yeah. Had to think about just it. Like, yeah. Grew you know? his beard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Had talking. to come back. Came back to it with such low expectations. Yeah. That I when make, I saw it the yeah. next time, I was like, oh, okay. I see. I kind of see what they were trying. I was going to mention that as well. How like Man of Steel and Suicide Squad, I think, have made the two best trailers mm. going into a movie. No, I did not. Now this is a movie that's sort of interesting. The trailer. <laughs> trailer for Suicide Squad. Oh, I love the trailer. For for what? Suicide Squad. Yeah. Great trailer. Great trailer up here. I remember seeing. I remember seeing that and 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 watching Margot Robbie. Like delivery it. and I went. Oh, oh, I walked. Crazy. out I was like, "That's this movie's gonna suck." Nah, man. That's like, not funny the way the music edited yeah. to like action oh, shit. It was so yeah, cool. I was super stoked. Yep. Anyway, uh, Man of Steel was a weird movie for me because I I, oh I had God. seen it all before, right. but just in different chunks and totally in out of order. This is a movie that my dad likes for the visuals, so mm-hmm. he'd always like play it on his TV and like yeah, sounds. He's a big great. fan of gray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He loves no color. Uh, but uh, finally seeing it in its entirety. Uh, I, I kind of enjoyed it, you know. I didn't I didn't hate the movie. I, I expected, I guess, going into with a lot of low expectations helps out quite a bit. But I I like Henry Cavill in this movie. I, I, I know Nick doesn't, but I, I I enjoyed his performance. in this I think film. he's the weakest part of the film, and I think the reason he's the weakest part of the film is because you have his two counterparts that he gets to act opposite of, which mm-hmm. is Russell Crowe and Michael Shannon, who are fucking phenomenal. That scene they have where he's standing on, he's talking to his AI, and he's like, "You're talking about genocide." And he's like, "Yeah, I'm explaining that to a ghost." That back and forth is so good. Really cool. yeah. The problem I ha- like, have you isolated this virus? Yeah, the, the the it's not that I don't think Henry Cavill's good. It's just I feel like they I don't think they gave him a lot of stuff to do. I don't think they gave him a lot of great lines. I think a lot of his dialogue is flat, and I think they told him direction wise just to play it kind of flat. And you contrast that to Christopher Reeves, who was so charismatic even in the role. Mm. He was just this fucking likable Boy Scout. And we had the back and forth back in the original movies with Lois. You were just like, it's a guy I want to hang out with, man. He seems like a nice, just cool guy. And in this, he's so monotone the entire time that when he, when, when Michael Shannon's acting opposite, he's phenomenal when he's screaming at him where he's like, he has that moment where he's like, this is what you've given it, like left us the ash. And he's like, I'm going to make them pay. I have a super cool haircut. Fucking pay. Like, you feel it, and then he's like, you just don't feel anything that Cavill. He just can't possibly. Cavill does that get weird thing that where he does like the he does the thing where he's gonna fly. I'm like, that's not intimidating, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up and flying at him like a boogie board, um, not intimidating. Don't yeah, do that. And again, I don't I don't know that that's not, like to me this movie. I like this movie. I, I should say before I'm critical of it, and I'm I'm gonna be really critical of this movie because it reminds me of like a Quentin Tarantino quote he said about a movie one time, and I can't remember which one it is. Chat, let me know or comments, let me know. But he said, I think this movie is good. This movie is so good, it makes me mad. It's not great. And mm. that is why that is what I feel every time I watch this. I'm like, why isn't this fucking I'm exactly great? there? That's why isn't point. it great? great? It's got all. It's got everything it could possibly need in this movie. And I've watched this film four times. I cannot put my finger on any one reason why it doesn't resonate as a one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. Oh, can I jump in? Yeah, I think it's because 
the I agree with you. And Barrett actually had a great tweet the other night of like it's like a highlight reel of this film, right? Yeah. The problem is, and it's what I've said since I think I started talking about this movie in general, is that the moments in there that shine aren't earned and aren't set up. And it's one of those few like things. Every time he saves Lois. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just like, oh, grab it, go. Sure, but I, <laughs> I, 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 mean, I think the paramount example in this film of you being like, this is so great, but why isn't it hitting the way it should? Right. Is that final confrontation in the train station with Zod, mm-hmm. which gets a laugh every time when I watch it with somebody new, right? Where he starts trying to burn the people and he stops, he's like, no. Nah! And then he snaps his neck, right? He drops dead. And I think it's Cavill's best performance in the movie. And he just goes, and he, like, you can see the pain and anguish. And it's like, mm-hmm. Lois runs down and he's on his knees and holds him, right? And it's solemn and it's quiet for a second. And I remember watching that being like, this scene is awesome. It is completely unearned yeah. in the way that Clark and Lois's relationship has escalated way too quickly way too into fast. this. Why they make it out? On top this of the weird. fact that yeah, don't make out. This here. is it's a movie that I think in the Z- Snyderverse in general, in DCEU for that matter, then suffers in the beginning stages of we're not doing a cookie cutter Marvel film, we're not doing a Boy Scout film, we're doing something gritty and grounded in reality. Yada yada. One hundred percent, you are making a sci-fi film, and so that is how they go with it. I think lots of places it works. It's different, whatever. But that scene in particular is literally you can see them in the meeting the pitch room pitching it but they're pitching it n- with us having the explanation and the audience having the understanding that Superman is Superman and Superman doesn't kill yeah. at no point does Jor-El or Jonathan or anyone in the Kal-El Superman Clark anywhere in this thing be like I have to be better than that I have to step up and I can't let and blah blah blah. So when you get there, like that message we've already, doesn't mean anything. We've already yeah. black holed all these people in a suicide mission above the thing. We're surrounded by thousands of dead metropolisites, right? Like you are one hundred percent justified in this. And like when Zod starts the conversation from the outside and he's like, This only ends one way. You're dead or I'm dead. And it's like yeah, I thought those stakes were pretty clear. At no yeah. point did I think we're going to talk you down and get you to understand what's going. Well, and that's and that's it's a disappointing aspect of the movie, right? And I know a lot of people have said like, "Hey, great, we're getting superheroes in the modern era now. Or why can't Batman and Superman kill?" But to me, the 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 that's a big issue, and that's that was one of the biggest decisions that I think was a miss in this movie is that the idea that he can't kill is because he's better is 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 strong, but it also story wise means that you have to think outside of the box right. as to how he's supposed to beat these people. Yeah. It's a similar reason why he always had a secret identity. It wasn't because he necessarily needed it, but it added tension to the story that people didn't know who he was and he had to protect the people he loved. The, you know, all, all of those things, while cheesy, kind of mean something and they help make this character that would otherwise there. be a little bit uh, flat. They help create that, make that a little bit more well And that's the problem with this film compared to other Superman lore is that I always go back to it and I know I'm crazy, don't get me wrong, and I'll, I'll defend it another day, but I think Smallville is the best live inter- interpretation of Superman we've had and that's throwing out 90% of the bad episodes. But it is... The Kents. That was a trick question. There are no bad episodes, Small Bill. I like you. Boom. I like you. It is the, the Kents, Rings, baby. Establishing. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. Let's go, man. Clark. I mean, think about think about the Donner movie. Think about Christopher Reeve. And, and when Jonathan's talking to him, he's like, "You were put here for a reason." And it, and it. But you're the reason is you're here to be a good person. What they toy around with this in this weird modern world of how would superheroes really be in our world is Jonathan being like. What, was I supposed to let them die? And he goes, maybe. Yeah. Which is a, a, a what an interesting concept and thread that they never get to the end where Jonathan's like, no, you need to save everybody. You need you need to not kill. You need to be this. Yeah. You can rule the earth. I mean, Jonathan, one of the final things he talks to him about, right, is like, good or bad, you're going to change the world. Like, wh- why would you say that to the god you're raising? That like, oh mm-hmm. no, either like he's not establishing that moral fiber, the conundrum. And like. The, the, he's giving him a conundrum and like base, usually it is black and white good and bad this is how we're going to establish it and again it's interesting to have those themes but then to get to the, where the train's going and have all of a sudden it be a, a moral dilemma for him no fucking train, yeah. break mm. Zod's neck are you kidding me but I also lo- like jump up and fly out of there with him in your arms you know See that's that stuff to me is like wait so not the destruction I think that what? don't worry about it. oh I don't care about the destruction no, no no yeah well I mean I, no I meant in that moment where he's about to snap oh. his neck and it's like mm-hmm. there's no other option but to snap his yeah, neck yeah. it's like no you could have just jumped and flown away I, I, I want to give Zack Snyder and the team a lot of kudos for trying to do something 100%. that actually has a lot of like like a lot into it right the only issue is I mean the big issue is that there's too much in this movie right he's got three dads for for all intents and purposes and that's that's the that he's got he's got um, Jonathan Jor-El. Kent, kind of Jor-El, thing. and then he should have, he kind of has Zod as a person who's like, hey, you could be this other thing, right? Yeah. And that's why that, that scene at the end didn't impact me, because I wanted them to have more relationship. Right. I wanted right. him to be like, 
why are you defending these people? We could be gods to these people. We could recreate this civilization and have him actually spend more time getting to know that and question that part of himself. <laughs> Which, again, is my favorite thing on analysis. Why when credits roll is like, I'm Zod. I want to restart Krypton. I'm on a planet where we all have superpowers, but fuck that. Reterraform everything. And, and there's dumb. one line where, where he's like, you could live among us. And he's like, have to, and learn to adapt like you did. Zod, you adapt in five minutes five and you're, minutes. you yeah. can fly and shoot beams out of yeah. your eyes. It's dope. Fucking breed every one of these embryos on a kids out, put Kal-El's blood in him, and let's fucking go let's and have go. a planet. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's, like, I don't think it was Kal-El's blood. I, like, I think it's just like they can naturally adapt. Well, no, no, that's where the codex is, I'm saying. That's, oh, got it, got it. Because that's yeah. his whole thing is he still wants but to But also, like, it, it, one of the things that doesn't make any sense is like, why, like, if they're terraforming a planet, why not go to Venus, which is like, the same size and relative distance yeah. to, to the same sun. sun. Yeah. I mean, it's the yeah. sun, yeah. right? And you could just be God. Yeah, of the, of I mean, this like galaxy. you have a terraforming machine yeah. that will fix it. So, and again, uh, that, and that's your point that I think you nail so well is that this ends with us having to think of in a traditional Superman way. But in outside of that, it would have been so much more fascinating, right? If there was this confrontation of wills that wasn't the trope of putting back in the Phantom Zone, and it was like. Let's make you understand you have this technology. Why not take another planet and have a new Krypton in our solar system, right? And be like, what the fuck do we and do? That, and that's the thing, too, right? The, the, I love the beginning of this movie. I fucking love the beginning of this the movie. The 40 because minutes because of it, being oh, on I love every part of that. It's because just too long. what I like about it, well, Wait, I'll, get really to, quick, I'll get to that in a second. Me. But what I like about it is that it has two <laughs> the two different ideologies of this film, right? Which is that, like, it, it's, it's Jor-El versus Zod, which is we fucked up. We need we, we Krypton's had its, its moment. Now we're gonna we're moving on from this versus oh no we fucked up but I can change this I and love I can, that and I love that they're both I love, against the council they know and, and that you this see is wrong. both sides of it like Zod comes in and he kills the council and you're kind of like well he should have done that right. a while ago yeah, like, yeah, these yeah. guys are dumb um, it's just to Kevin's point it is a forty minute long scene right and then we get the rest of the movie where there's a lot of flashbacks and they try to give you they give you way too much of of what's happening in the past like there's a there's a scene in this movie where he's trying to figure out if he should give himself up and he goes to a church and then in the church has a flashback of a conversation he had with his dad why couldn't he have just had the con like all that stuff served to back up the choice Dude, he makes in the future do you think why you can trust Zod priest? do you think you can trust Zod says the priest and, and Kal your heart Kal El's like I don't think I can and there, good thing that there's not an AI with all of Krypton's information and my father's personality that I could literally go ask him what's about to happen to which he would be like don't trust don't Zod do at it. all He's in fact the guy. ship we sent you with this would be the way to do it I come talk to me don't yeah. make me give you this information through Lois on their spaceship. Yeah, yeah and with the flashbacks and stuff, one that I thought was really weird was they, they, they kind of set up rules of flashbacks, and the rules are there's going to be a lot of them, and I, I liked them. I did not like the him getting like knocked out on the ship and then having a weird vision of Zod weird, where they're in Zod Smallville, in there. Yeah. and you're like, well, I think what is this? That was him invading his mind, yeah, mind yeah, yeah, which Lois, they do to Lois, too. Well. We just didn't we just but didn't it's, it's it. the thing of when, they come, when he comes out of it, all I needed, some kind of tether, so, like some kind of device on his head that's linking them together. Because that is really just being like, and let's continue our conversation. I know, I, I, get, I know what they, I know what it was. Yeah, yeah. I just think that when we, there's a visual language to this movie that like you just then add this other element, and sure. it's like it's just too much of like things that aren't actually happening in reality. But I, and I agree with you 100 percent, right? But it's, I think. Zack Snyder to a T, right? Of like, let's do some awesome visual shit. Yeah. And like and him, him sinking, sinking into, into the skulls. skulls you're like, awesome. That's fucking awesome. That was really but cool. see, I, and I like that. And that's what I, I wish they had chosen to. God, to I just, love talking DCEU with you I guys. Just, and I know it's only going to get so much worse from here, but uh, I just enjoy this. Necessarily, because I think, Oh, no, it's going to be bad. I, let, let me just <laughs> very on. quickly yeah, say yeah, my yeah. opinion. Like, I, I don't like this movie. I think that it has some cool visual moments and some interesting story beats, but I think that it's all cobbled together. Basically, what you guys think. But like, I don't feel like it's it's even in the good category where it's like I don't like I I get that this is a new uh, or like you know an, a new attempt at like a, a different interpretation of Superman, but I also think it's like <laughs> the weakest. Like I hate when it's like oh the alien Superman and that like that's what we get for so much of it. I feel like they like, do. A, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, no, it's okay. It's just like I, there's so many moments where they're like he's like, well, I am an alien, and it's like, well, fucking. But I think he uses it in a very in a very <laughs> I am away. both I am I I when I you know I talk about this all the time. I hate. Superman, when he is, I'm Kal El, the alien from Krypton, Krypton mm -hmm. over everything else, right? I do like Clark. Yeah. I was raised in Smallville. I am it. I feel I've been here for 33 years. I, I, I like he's like, I was born in Kansas. <laughs> the, see, I, like, I, I, I hold on, hold on a second. So, 
We're trying to track you and where you live and who you are. <laughs> you were born in Kansas. There was a big fight in Kansas. Where was it? Smallville, right? Okay, where did the fight happen? Main Street. Oh, that's pretty vague. Oh, and then they all showed up to this one house and threw a truck through it. What's that name? Kent. Go to the Kent house. Do you have a son? I'm not talking to you. All right, let's go to the high school. Look, look like? at the yearbook. That's Superman. That's Superman right there. I didn't need a $12 million drone to figure this uh, fucking see, out. See, I didn't get that. I got that they knew kind of who he was, but they wanted to track his whereabouts. Where, yeah. I think they want to track him. Not, like, if we had, if that Superman was real, you bet the fucking farm that the United States government oh, yeah, would no, track he him. Would not be, is he seven. planning things? Yeah. 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 I, didn't, I didn't get, I didn't read that as like, Maloney. we need to figure out who this your man is not our enemy. enemy. Yeah. Yes, Chris Maloney. Yes. I, I loved him, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I loved him so Stabler. much, and I love that he didn't die. And like, he there was so many times he almost died. Dude, and then we pulled the, the knife, end. and she pulls the knife, and I was like, "This is a scene, right?" I, now. I, oh, man. I know yeah. that Nick the didn't. End was great with I know him. that Nick didn't love the, uh, uh, or it sounds like maybe even Greg didn't like a lot of the moments where um, Henry Cavill is sort of playing this, uh, I guess, uh, ultra positive sort of heartwarming Clark Kent. For the record, just to get in here. I thought I love Henry Cavill, period. But I thought he did really well in this movie. I okay. like this. Yeah, I, like I, I watching this again. It was like, oh man, I forgot how much he did smile in this movie. Yeah, that's like one the, of the, the big knocks. The sort of goody two shoes, you know, middle of America sort of uh, Superman. I I enjoyed those moments where Henry Cavill was sort of. Uh, on screen showing that like you know there's that moment where he saves a cop he's are you okay yeah, and I, yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, th those are just those moments that you can like oh superman he's a good dude you so know? Yeah. so what so what i responded to is like i i i don't want to start a rumor that i don't like henry cavill i think i just him, i just think that i think <laughs> well nick is gonna be hard why are you talking shit about him <laughs> <laughs> It's Henry uh, I mean, I, I, bro. <laughs> gotta be amazing. Like, you got the wrong Henry. This is the one that haunts me <laughs> daily. <laughs> Fucking winked. I got winked. Um, I, you know, it's just that I, I feel like when you contrast this before, okay, perfect example. It's is, hard to compare him to Christopher Reeves. What's, yeah. What, what Reeves. this movie is very Reeves. lacking for me is there's a scene in the original Superman. We've talked about this before. Superman. Right? Everything in the beginning of this. Now, the original Superman, very, very slow. And I watched it on the plane ride, I think, to London again. I was like, wow, wait, this wait, fucking movie is slow. Sorry, which, which Superman are you talking Super about? Donner, 76. Okay. Dick Donner, Superman the movie, right? Um, 76, right? Or am I, am oh, I confusing I Star Wars? I think it's like 79. 79, maybe? Yeah, I think 79. Um, the, everything in this movie is so slow. We're on fucking Krypton. Doesn't matter. It all builds. It all builds. It all builds to this wonderful moment where Lois Lane gets into a helicopter. Mm. And it's this simple thing. The helicopter bum, just bum, bum. something. A screw goes loose. 78. Skunk, gunk, gunk. Right, and you see him walk out, and he looks up, and something falls. The uh, the helicopter tries to take off; it can't. It's just a simple malfunction, and it goes over the side. And then he fucking you just see him go up straight, grabs it, grabs Lois, and he goes, "Don't worry, ma'am, I've got you." And she goes, "You've got me. Who's got you?" Yeah. And it's this unbelievably cool, fun, just great moment that was so tense before. And in that one line, he just he just diffuses it, and they have this beautiful chemistry together. And we never get anything like that in this movie. Every time he saves Lois, it's a quick snap, zoom to her face, we're done. And it's like, that's the emotional heart of the story is that you're trying to save humanity. You're trying to save these people. Why wasn't there more build up to these wonderful moments where she's falling and you grab her like last second. He grabs her, he picks her out of midair every single time. There's at no point do you think she's going to die ever because he's fucking there. And it's like, ah, where's the tension in this? But Nick, at one point, a waitress gets harassed by a dude. And then he destroys that guy's truck, which <laughs> which the guy comes logs. out. By the way, the guy comes out and he's like, "Huh, this happened again." Like, who? <laughs> <laughs> this just keep happening. Again? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop parking my truck on telephone poles. <laughs> oh, <but> damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Huh. Now knock, you mentioned knock off Luke Perry. you mentioned the quick zoom. Uh, you know, there's also 98 other thousand zooms in this movie. God, it's so bad. I, don't, I hate the, that device. I, I, hate I hate that it. digital zooming shit. I don't like it. Nick, no. you you said something before we were recording that I I I really thought was interesting about Pete. Yeah, there's a mo there's Peter another Ross? moment in the movie Coffee? where so he breaks through this IHOP, right? And he um, looks up and he sees Pete. Pete yeah. And there's it's such a missed opportunity because if this had been a Marvel Clark? movie, he would have been like this, "Hey Pete," and then gotten oh, taken out again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Just okay. a one nod of like, "Hey, like I'm a huge, I'm a, a yeah. fucking real person," you know? Like and so he just it just it just feels like they didn't they could not find the emotional center of this I character think they, in the entire and I, movie. And I agree with you. Don't get me wrong, because <laughs> I, I, I haven't said wait either. Like, right? He's like, the only thing that's not real in this to me. Like, two, he's two dimensional. Enjoy Man of Steel. The the, the struggle with all of this, right? And the, that I've said every time I have to go lay on the cross and get whipped for Batman v Superman, right? <laughs> is this like these are not the this these are not the DC <laughs> movies I want. These are not the super movies I want. I appreciate this iteration, right? I enjoyed watching this again last night. Me I too. enjoy this movie. Me too. Um, but it is that thing of I still feel they were DC and Warner Brothers at the time was so gun shy about not being Marvel and not being hokey. And we have to make Superman not be the Boy Scout and not be the and like you can see that I think in these decisions then of not having that fun nod to Pete, not having 
the is as awesome as the in Superman the movie that the scene you're talking about of saving Lois the first yeah. time with the helicopter is that that doesn't play as well here when you're trying to be more grounded, more real, save her, get out, go do the next thing. I I do appreciate when. He saves her on re-entry from Zod's spaceship. They do that little twirl and land, and they have that one moment in the cornfield, and then he has that mom and like, yeah, like that's cool. That's that's a good but moment. I, they I, shouldn't all be like that. I agree yeah, 100%. I just I just feel like there's like they were like we want to cram so much into this, and I again I give him kudos for that. I do like this film a lot, and they, but that's why it's so fun to be overly critical because like we didn't need maybe twenty percent of the stuff. We didn't need twenty percent of the flashbacks. We didn't need that moment where your mom's like, "Well, then make the world smaller," because that should have been the actual theme of the movie should have been stated at that point. And I'm not sure what the theme of this movie is because they explore so many like intricate themes, but like. There's there's that moment where she's you know she's outside she's like Clark can you hear my voice yeah, yeah, yeah. and that that traditionally yeah, would have been the she... moment during the B plot where they told you what the A plot theme was right this is when like it's like Clark it's his dad goes you have to decide the man you want to be but that's like who's who's talking here who's the who's the thematic voice in this movie yeah. so there's four of them it's his it's Jor El it's his mom it's his dad it's Zod it's all of these See, people I, that are I in felt this. like they all backed each other up though like I I think that this movie actually needed more I think the things that it had it needed more. less of in ways yeah. like the the 40 minute intro it should have been more like Star Trek 2009 where it's what? like, let's get in and ten out. Minutes, let's have a, a yeah. ten minutes super Even fucking hype it, right? run through this. It is yeah, the thing of like, all right, jor gets killed. And I was like, all right, cool. And here's where Krypton starts exploding. And I was like, oh, right, fuck, no. We got to go to court. We got to put him in these dildos and fire them into the <laughs> That was I a didn't know poor choice. choice. As soon as it went off, Lucy's like, oh, that's an unfortunate shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that, that's uh, what should have been. So big? <laughs> <laughs> like, how big are these people's feet? <laughs> it should have been condensed. But like, I feel like so much of the other movie, if you were to boil down the, the plot into just this happens, then this happens, and this happens. It's so weirdly straightforward. Oh, like, yeah. Then there's the flashbacks that just kind of like enhance and back up mm-hmm. what's exactly happening. But I really just feel like there is no B plot. So yeah, th- it's I, odd. There there isn't, and there's also it just doesn't really necessarily follow a traditional structure, which I guess I'm probably um, responding to as well. Right? There's the moment where it, it, like it, it's sort of revealed that people are starting to get to know who this Superman person is, right? And what this movie's missing is it's missing a really big in the middle of the movie where he decides to reveal himself to the world. And the way he does that is by showing up at an Air Force base. Not by saving someone amiss. Having, they, they should have had this one. They needed the plane sequence from Superman Returns in the middle of this movie. They needed there to be a moment where he's going to decide he who he is. And he's going to do that right now because the stakes are so fucking high that he ha- like a plane of people are going to go down. And I cannot stand by anymore. My the, the importance of people not knowing me is is overshadowed by my need to to save these fucking people right now because that is who I am. And we don't really ever get that. We get instead this amazingly cool scene in the middle of Smallville by an IHOP. And it's like, I like that scene, but it doesn't it doesn't have the importance that it should have. Superman should have this moment where he's coming out to the world, which is what he does when he saves Lois that one moment in, in the at, at, at the fucking height of literally the, the world's biggest newspaper publication, The Daily Planet. He saves this person and everyone goes, who the fuck is this guy? And the next day, Superman everywhere, Superman everywhere. In this, it's like, do people know he exists? Like, I guess they've well, seen yeah, this the, happen. Well, yeah, the TV but... thing had gone on. So, like, everyone knows there's some weird alien that's been yeah. hiding Yeah, but here. not in the blue and the red. Yeah. I, no, I no, I, I know, yeah. I know. I know what I'm I, there's, there's a channel I really like called Nando V Movies. And I love it, Cheeky Nando. Uh, and and oh, he always does analysis on, like, here's one change that we would have made to the story that would have been really good. And essentially his change is that, but there's also the, the outfit like in his version, it starts out with the gray. So it looks like everyone else's like all the other Kryptonians that like undersuits oh. and that he goes the- and changes it because red and blue, he's like, Oh, the colors of like ambulances and police. So like people can recognize America. that and yellow for the sun. America, baby. Yeah. Well, yeah, sure. America. But, um, and like it's just like yeah, yeah and, and, that and one big moment so, would have so, been so cool. But and again, going back to it, like, but there's so much good about this. Right, I love the beginning of it because I love seeing the 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 beginnings of all, how all the suits and all the symbols are. I love the fucking weird it's science cool they building, use in this. Yeah. That crazy like I would, would nanotechnology or it looks fucking, like those things you put your face in yeah. at the museum. I think all that stuff. I love seeing their reimagining of Krypton. I think all that stuff's cool, and but it's like, but it much. feels like a whole other movie. Yeah, that we're seeing, and it's like I, I, I want to see that as well. And again, not to not to bat harp on Henry Cavill, but Russell Crowe is like an Academy Award winning, amazing actor whose accent works. And the woman that they cast for for the, his wife, Lara, they're great. No, 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 I no. Like her. She was 
horrible. Really? She was the only like actor or actress in this movie that I was just like, I are you fucking great. kidding me? In the beginning when she like has to say goodbye to, to baby Superman, it was just like, what the fuck are oh. you trying to emote right now? I love that. I love that I, because what I, to me it was – I don't want to show my emotion here because I know we have to do this. I'm holding back. Like there's there's no other option here. And I got I, I think they were trying to paint her as more of like a she's not just a house mom. She's like a scientist and actually understands what's happening right here and has to take part in it. Gia looked at me and was like, "Whose wife is she?" And I was like, "Hers." And she's like, "No, no, no, no." In real life. Ah, ah I see. I was like, "Damn." Has she been in stuff since then? Because this time on a rewatch of watching, is like I feel like I've seen her since. If this. I'm not mistaken, she reminded me of Renee Russo. I think she was in the third season of uh, Daredevil. <laughs> As Kingpin's like girlfriend. Fuck, god damn it! That'd yeah. be the first one too. Then she was she gets interviewed. I, I haven't seen her anything else. Yeah, maybe she was in the first, first one. I remember one. her popping up and going, "Oh man, I think that's I think that that was the the actress from Man of Steel." I noticed the acting just a total far cry from Martin Lawrence in Bad Boys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Mike, we gotta move. Let's get to the plot. Mike. Everybody, release Snyder Cut now. Release the Snyder Cut now. We start as all great stories do at the beginning. Superman coming out of a vagina, <laughs> just all blue, blue, blue. You know what I mean? <laughs> and as they're there, and you, you got Keylux there, you got Keylor there. They're all like, "What the fuck? We haven't seen one of these in forever." But they're projecting babies and shit. It's great. Jorel's like, "I got it, Robot Man. Thank you so much." They pop out this kid, and you're like, "Man, this is a lot of drama for a kid, right?" And it turns out, of course, he needs. We'll find out. Kids aren't born this way on Krypton, yeah. right? But instead, mm. this one is Kal El of Krypton. You know what I mean? And so then, no, because we don't get that moment. I know. <laughs> let's we go. don't get that you moment. Know it, you know, know it. You know it. You know it. Fill in the blanks. <laughs> All right. We go to the Krypton yeah, Council there's there. There's so much fill in the blanks with this stuff. Yeah, well, there's yeah. a lot. There's a, well, we'll get to all of it if you want. And somehow, so not the hell really. that thing replicates their atmosphere. Because that's giving them the powers, kind of. Okay. So, wait. When they're on the no. Earth, why are the... Why why are they strong as Superman when they're in their little atmosphere thing? When the atmosphere thing up there made them not made, made Superman well, like a there's human. There's still some sun coming in. You got to get some vitamin D. So, okay, so still mm, he should be able to crush mm, their skulls really quickly really and not be really fucking fighting. Yeah, yeah, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Right? Could have been oh, an interesting. Thing. interesting plot All right, let's point. move on. Uh, we're in the Kryptonian Council and Jor-El's there, being like, "Listen, it's fucked. I told you, idiots, not to mine the core." I'm not even a scientist. I don't even need science with Kevin on this one. <laughs> Somebody's like, hey, Greg, should we mine the core of the planet? I made I'm a movie like, no, about it. Donald Trump. Science. No, bullshit. Science. You'd be like, this, Kev, what do you think? Kev, like, I think it sounds like a good idea. You're like, I trust Kevin. Let's look, go. Look, if you, can, if say, you yeah. can pull the heat out to generate energy. Oh, God, he's saying it's okay. I'm just saying, like, I don't know what, what kind of mining they were doing. But, but I like this concept, yeah. right? I like the idea that they're, tra- they're they're taking out something, and it's it's dra- it, it has basically, what you think, uh, affected the gravitational pull of the core, and it I, imploded I mean, itself and you blown could, up. you got to imagine they, like, must have hauled out enough to, Way like, too much of it cause it to, like, collapse. I think it's awesome. I understand that. I have, to use a, I have to use a reference point. We're not. It's not PC to do anymore. Um, right? Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't remember that episode of the Cosby Show. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, okay. Cliff, he loved those banana cream. Pies. He really did. He really did. In more ways than one. Yeah. Oh my god! But That's no, what he, he took victims. off the topping that one time, ate out the banana cream filling, put in paper towels, and put. The, I remember that. The, I remember the that. Topping back on, right? Same situation we got. Here. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> right. Exactly. How does your mind work, Greg? <laughs> if we can take a cook like aside, a yes, we can. Don't get me wrong. There's 999 reasons Bill Cosby is a fucking horrible human being, and he's wronged the world, right? Okay. But one of the w- the way low priority ones is the fact that I have an encyclopedia knowledge of the Cosby Show, it and sucks. I can't use it anymore. You will once he dies. It never I think you comes can go up in conversation <laughs> anymore. Uh, I feel like you're proving right now that you still can use it. You go to yeah, tri- but even you now, to, even now, I'm doing it amongst it. friends. You go to Where's my night, TED so Talk? Like, Where are the Cosby Where's questions? Where's my TED Talk? You know what I mean? Remember, when they came out and they lip synced by the stairwell. It was amazing. I don't remember any of it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I know exactly. What so you're we're still on Krypton. <laughs> Love it. We're talking to the council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hollowed out the core like Heathcliff Huxable did. You fucked us all. Jorel, you're crazy. We no. What are we gonna do? Look to the stars. We already sent thousands of years ago. We sent everybody out there. That Why was a great. 
stop that process. I ah, don't budget understand. Cuts. Budget cuts. But like, it <laughs> no, he, seems like he explained it, and actually, um, I forget why, but they explained like, how, it in the how movie. How are we going to pay? No, for it? later, <laughs> later, they're like, oh, we went when, to when asked, investigate when Clark them. Explains it, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like well, everyone Zod. was dead. Yeah, Zod was saying yeah, yeah. like everyone. All but we found was death. Well, they had that doesn't count because the people are dead there because they got cut off from Krypton. Yeah, so they had so which sucks. What I got was, and and I actually like a lot of this backstory. What I got was there was like a change in the regime, and they said we're not doing this more. It was political. Instead, we're going to do like we're going to mine the Earth's like our core, and that's a better idea because it make it doesn't make sense. Remember when Jor El explains it to Superman later? The reasoning is that they yeah they went insular, right? They cut off na- the population controls they didn't were want established, it, yeah. so they started the genome project back here, or yeah. whatever. And then, it was yeah, a, it was a shift in like a, in, in their political they started policies. looking inward yeah. with their problems, not outward. Which which. But you know, if you want to get super nutty about it, you're like, why doesn't do. this? This people are like super advanced. Why doesn't everyone just jump in a ship and just go? Yeah, like you figure they can yeah, just live on the like ships for a while. Do, but yeah. it doesn't matter. I, what I like about it is, um, I like that it's it's more of an ideological argument, right? It's do we deserve to continue on because we've made such poor choices? Yeah, are we geez. not going to just? Like, is this not just gonna the cycle gonna continue if we go to another planet? We're just gonna destroy that because we're dumb. Krypton, we should let that die. I like I like her line, Laura's line, where they're like, "Later, Laura, why don't you go?" And he's like, "She's like, there's nowhere to go." And what she means by that is like, we're at the end of the road as far as our civilization. It's not necessary. I got that to be a little bit more uh, philosophical of like, we're done. Krypton's done. So she got hit by lava. <laughs> Man, she got hit by rolling. She got yeah, lava. evaporated. Sucks. Anyways, yeah. So I, this. Ha- oh, sorry. Go on. I was just gonna say, like, I wish that, um, like, obviously, there's been a lot of versions of, um, like, on the origin story. Yeah, exactly. But one of the things that uh, it seemed like this was like staying true, where it's like people don't have babies the traditional way, yeah. and Kryptonians don't like touch ever, or don't have any physical, uh, like, relationships. Maybe at they all. do it with the mind devices from demolition. No, yeah, I think exactly. they come in a little thing. They blow each other. Yeah. Anyways, what? I, the, uh, one of my favorite images is uh, Krypton exploding. And uh, Jor-El and, and Laura like kissing for the first time, mm. and it's just like I wish we had gotten that mm. instead of oh, her kissed, dying alone. Me. We did, yeah. yeah, upstairs and yeah. downstairs. You know what yeah, I mean? Downstairs Maybe. kissing. Sixty-nine. I don't like it. Just like they did. Maybe, just, like, it. It, it just like just like Ethereal did in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, he's so read the yeah, books. Guess what? We fucked it <laughs> up. We, this is all dead. No, it's stupid. We're not going to space. That's stupid. Uh, okay. No, it, I had we had our own child. It's I know we can make babies still. The vaginas and the pee still work. And they're Babies. like, well, that's an interesting. Boom! The door blows up. Like, what the what the fuck is this? And it's Zod. And it's a uh, Feora. And it's a whole bunch of other people. You only know their names if you read the captions. Well, like my when my wife makes me walk with the captions, and they walk in. And so do I. What's and, wrong with that? Sorry, cool. really? I hate him. I hate him so much. It. No. I love it. You, 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 they walk in like this characters. council's disbanded, and the one who's authority? Bam! My authority. Oh my god! It's a coup. It's <laughs> violent. Yeah, yeah, I love like, that. Yeah, yeah. I love the effect of that blast. Yeah, yeah totally. She's I, I wasn't yeah. quite sure what the blast was doing. I was like, Are Energy, they disintegrating. Bro. What's going on? No, here? she just slumped yeah. over. Yeah. It was just a big blast. Come with you though. It was kind of like it looked like it burned her from the inside, but then another shot didn't. And jor like, "Whoa, Zod!" And Zod's like, "Hey, Jor, like, I'm listen. Don't let's be friends. I know we've never really we haven't gotten along in a while, but." We are on the same. We have the same goal. That Krypton's in trouble. I guess that's not, we have the same problem. Krypton's in trouble. And these sandbags down here, they yeah. ain't doing nothing about it. Join me. He's like, it's already too late. This isn't gonna do it. Whatever. And Zod's like, nah, fuck that. You're an, you're an idiot. Put him in cuffs and walk him away, everybody. And they're like, oh fuck. Okay, we gotta walk Jor-El out of here. Okay, cool. And so they start walking Jor-El. And then you know, Keyleth pops back up, and it's Lara, and she doesn't look right. Her hair's all fucking like PS2 graphics, but it doesn't matter. And she's all like. <laughs> What's up, Jor? He's like, hey, man, shit's going on. And then he just does, hey, the, he does <laughs> the fucking nod. And, and it's like, okay, cool. And Keelix flashes everybody. He shuts his eyes, flashes everybody. And then he does some Russell Crowe moves and he punches them. He literally stuff. at one point grabs someone's kidney or some shit. He has this weird move. He goes, gah. <laughs> he's like, yeah. You know? I, I That'd be great if that's how he beats, Superman beats Zod later on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> your kidney dance grab. move. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I understand that they're like, look, this is an action movie <laughs> and we have to put action in this somewhere. But having jor be able to like fight really well, I thought was a this poor super choice. Scientist. I think. He he should have been everything that he does should have been about outsmarting people because he was smart. We've we've established that Zod cannot be beaten because he's been bred since birth. Yeah, we established that all right. Well, I mean, we kind of get the idea. They say it enough, but like I think where were you raised? A farm? Yes. Which means you should kick the shit out of me. Yeah, I should have no should have chance in this fight. The fuck out of me. But like, it, it's just, it's unfortunate. I think it was a poor choice of having him be like this actiony guy. Because later he gets in like the armor and starts, and he yeah. wins a fight with Zod. I'm like, why would that be possible? Hubris. Anyway, so be possible? you're ahead of the game. So Jorah runs outside and he's like, oh man, all sorts have happened. He's like, hey, Space Portillo. And Space Portillo like comes <laughs> in. 
And then he goes like, <laughs> and it comes down and lands on Space Portillo lands. He jumps on Space Portillo. It's they the fucking think from off. episode two. Yeah. yeah, yeah oh my god, it is. Oh, it's Mike. And they're like, we gotta go get. Any, we gotta go get the Codex. And everybody's like, this is illegal. It's like it's all over anyway. Who fucking cares? Like you know that. what I mean? And we go over there, and he jumps, and man, Kryptonians can hold their breath a long time. Aliens, I believe yeah, it. Yeah, I believe crazy. it. Go down you there. Do that? You ever do that scene where you try to hold your breath as long as they have to hold their breath? And you all the time. I every time. Every time. Yeah. Uh, so be, no, no, they no, said there'd be sure. damage. I ain't seen it yet. It swims through it, goes by all the tadpole babies in the holes. <laughs> I'm looking at it. The, be- the, the beard's doing a lot more damage, don't worry. Uh, swims up there, guess what? There's a fucking monkey skull. It's got all the fucking stuff coming off it. You're like, what? What is yeah. Alright, whatever. This is a plot point to this movie, I guess. Grabs it. Looks super fragile. Grabs it. Swims back up. It. It's a squid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad down. I'm not the only one that thought. I was like, well, no, we'll no, be no, careful with that, bro. Dish. Climbs Call. up. Jumps on Portillo. And they're like, fucking freeze, man. And the bad guys, fucking freeze, dude. And he's like, fuck that. I got Portillo. And they start hey, flying. Hey, dude, freeze. <laughs> <laughs> bro, it's all over. And so he flies. And everybody just starts blasting. They're just fucking shooting. And everything's happening. The fucking Portillo, he gets wounded. And he's like, Arr. And like, he can't fly as fast. But he still get, they still get there. And he lands. Right, I love they have this wonderful moment Crash. where it's like, Oh no! He's like he says the thing's name and he looks down. And it's got this wound. He's and like, you have go this easy or something. Moment like that. where you're like, oh, he has a tremendous amount of empathy for this creature that he's riding, and then he slams the fucking thing, <laughs> and it just bounces. No looking back. They're like, I'll come back for you. It's too the late world's for over. They know it is. I got a real kid. I don't it's need this fucking dog like, anymore. In terms of fatherly figures, maybe this is how you should treat pets. But I'll get to that later. <laughs> he runs inside. He's got the monkey skull. He's like, Laura, <laughs> we gotta beam this shit into our kid. Look at his little. Dick. You, can't not. you can't not. You can't not. And they're like, all right. And they toss it up in the basketball hoop. And it's, boop, 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 boop. And it's like fucking raining little baby kal with radiation. He's all like, ah, ah. You know what I mean? And so this shit's happening. <laughs> I don't remember the baby doing that. This shit's they happening. Did make it look, they did this make it look like they put in the key, though. Oh, did they? Yeah. I didn't get that. No. I, I, I mean, I've seen the movie. The I'm not even thinking about like it anymore. Like starting, it's like, oh. Well, just, she isn't in the, in the machine, right? Yeah. To start the machine. I just got that they were good. they were like putting all the knowledge of it and all that stuff and the AI and stuff into the key. And so they do that. They but so why they, was it in the skull? I still don't really fully... That's the code. Oh, you know, it's like... Yeah, but, but, but we why, all came from the same thing. But why was it a little... A that's Kodak. That's humanoid Mr. Kodak. skull. <laughs> so there was another race called Mr. Kodak. Kodak's the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now the, the Kodak's I'm not a fan of. I'm a fan of, hey, population controls, everybody has a purpose, we genetically engineer everybody. Oh, totally makes sense. Okay, cool. All the DNA is being ripped from this monkey skull, and we're recoding it into the thing. Is that in previous canon? To my knowledge, no. But you know how comics are. There's yeah. a lot of comics. In in terms of like a real canon, no. Yeah. Well, they needed. Good. They needed to have Correct a reason why Zod needed him at the end. That's why the Codex exists. Totally. No, no I get it. No, I, get, no, I get that it's no, MacGuffin. But Codex, I, I totally understand but the, why the concept skull? of it. But yeah, I didn't understand so, visual. Yeah, cause, it was something. Because the question becomes then: Wait, so. Are all the DNA and jobs in this skull, or are we ripping them out of the skull and then using that? That's like the original no, Kryptonian. So I, I would imagine that's probably mm-hmm. like the oldest, like relic. Yeah, like the, the, most, bipod, the most pure but, version it, of a Lucy. No, 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 yeah, like the Lucy kind of thing, like yeah. the oldest by like the Morgan Freeman movie. Yes. Yeah. Really? Uh, uh, no. And like most people only use fourteen percent of brain. No Lucy idea. uses ninety six. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I, 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 I would imagine nah. if they just We're like. We're back, guys. <laughs> God, this has been three long years of shitty in reviews of a war on fire. And now, Andy, it's forty two minutes. There's so much more movies. It's a lot. <laughs> oh, it's a lot. We, we, we keep I'm pushing kind of funny podcasts back. We keep running into it. <laughs> Love it. So anyways, monkeys beam and this is happening. They seal the fucking thing up. They start the, the launch, you know, and Zod shows me like, Arr! let's yeah. go and fucking do this. And jor like, fuck you. And they start fighting. He immediately cuts Zod's face and Zod gets the thing at the camera. He's like, ah! I'm like, cool. And cool. so they're fighting. They're doing their thing or whatever. And Lara's hitting buttons and fucking things are swirling around. And so, yeah, like you said, jor gets the upper hand. You know what I mean? Well, first he puts his fucking dope ass armor on. He has the Iron Man moment where he goes. I love it. Why do we? I love it because it's like, oh, we got to sell action figures. I'm like, I don't know if this is that type of movie, but fuck it, fuck it, it is. I bought action figures. Yeah. And so they fight. Then you know, Jor El wins. Zod gets knocked to his knees, and he's like, all right, don't you send that. He said he has a better line. He's like, don't you hit that button? Don't you hit that button? You're gonna be in big trouble. Hit that shit back. Don't you hit the button? Don't let it launch. And so she, I forget what he says because he does say something. She like looks at him like fuck you and hits the button. You better not. You better not. I think he says something about Krypton, right? Where he's like Krypton's future is in that or whatever. She's like, go fuck yourself. And so she, that happens. And is this where she's like, uh, he's no, that's later. 
uh, hits the button and it takes off and everybody's like, oh, fuck no. And Zod's like, shink, and turns around and stabs jor -El. And Jor-El's like, oh, oh, why all this armor if it doesn't protect my side? He falls over. It's like <laughs> Batman. It's like totally, Batman. right? Well, there you are. Yeah. yeah. Why? Uh, Batman Returns, great movie. Uh, Jor-El falls down. He's Every dead. Batman. The thing takes off. Jor-El, or uh, yeah, Zod's mad. Zod radios out to all his people. He's like, and he doesn't radio out. On that he ship. runs outside oh, and then tells that. him because the ship's already like halfway oh, cool. up. Take off, all, take, kill, shoot the ship or whatever. And like, we got it, boss. And you see the fucking thing out there. There's another dildo just flying in the fucking sky. And they fire some shit. And they fire some people and they take up there. And then boom, another ship shows up. It blasts all that shit out. Uh, Kala warps away. And guess what? It's over. Your coup is over as fast as it began, Zod. And we're all like cool let's go to earth and we're like oh no we're still on krypton <laughs> so we get to go to the trial that. where they're like all right zod you're a fucking bad guy you kill a whole bunch of people and we're not a fan of you so we're gonna banish you up into the old phantom zone up there right or just stay here and just die with all of us Another, well or, they don't believe they don't believe that makes sense because they don't believe that but i don't happen. understand like the the world literally in like a span of 10 seconds is gonna explode ah, you don't believe that though <laughs> you look right out, now the waters are all, the the waters are all rising right now we're like oh greta fuck you you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> right and that's why it's jordan Go back to junior high, Greta. <laughs> I want her to climb in her ship and get the fuck out of here. No, but I mean, again, I think, I think, I think it's no, about... No, I mean in the good way. To like be like, fuck you, you didn't listen. See you later. I think it is about that political denial. I think it is about like, they're, they're like, we don't, it's hubris. We don't want yeah. to admit that this is happening. So we're, you know, and that, that's what led, has led us up to this point. Might as well steer, steer like keep on that. And so, train. yeah, they're like, any final words? And Zod's like, oh, I got a few. And he just monologues around. He's running up to people yelling in their faces. I love this yeah. scene. Kills I kills this love scene. Michael, Michael Shannon. Shannon. I love when he goes, I will find your son, Laura. I will, I will find, find him. him. I, I will find him. him. I will find him. It's like, we got it. We hit the button. Him. Who's hit, Who's got the button? Hit the button. <laughs> no, but see, what happened was someone was like, oh, he can act. Let's let that happen. Because for the rest of this movie, we're not going to get that that much. I think it was more like he said it once and I was like, I really hit. Well, okay, well, we got other takes. Should we keep editing them all together? <laughs> I, don't I, don't all I, I, don't, I don't give a fuck. I think my, first off, I think Michael Shannon is one of the best actors working in Hollywood. I think he's a fucking great villain. Yeah. And when he screams, I will find him. I'm like, oh, I believe it. that is haunting, man. And so they hit the button. They all turn into dildos. It looks like a very painful process. And I appreciate yeah. the first guy being a bitch about it. Then Feora being like, I'm not, I'm not. Oh, it hurts. And she does. And then Zod never does no, it. No, never. Like, yeah. I don't care. You're all tickling does he always have that haircut beat. in the yeah. comics? Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, in the comics? Every no. single time. Because yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it was a choice. It's the Russell yeah. Crowe. He haircut. looks like the main character from it, Tokyo he Drift. He is from Gladiator, right? He's yeah, very, it's Gladiator very, well, I think that's kind of what they wanted. They wanted it to look militant. They wanted it to look like a like a blunted, I don't care what my hair looks like kind of cut. And if you notice, I don't know if this was done by design. This is my weird brain drawing mm -hmm. parallels. He has zero sideburns. It's that very militant, like, I don't give a shit cut. And Henry Cavill has, like, nicer, like, oh, yeah, longer sideburns, the big flowing hair. I think they did that on purpose to really kind of strike the difference. You think he cuts his own hair with uh, his yeah. eyes in the mirror? Yeah, I, I think so. that's how he shaves. That's when I would shave. Yeah. My balls. Oh, his laser eyes. Oh, yeah. My, yeah, 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 laser oh, eyes. Cool. Um, anyways. So, they, so the dildos shoot up to the big hole They in the get sky. locked up in the sky. We're like, that's <laughs> cool technology. That's neat, whatever. And then, uh, yeah, Lady Lara goes home and just everything's blowing up. Lava pits everywhere. Shit's happening. And yeah, Keelor's like, Lady Lara, should you find uh, uh, shelter or something? That's not what she's... And she's Basically like, says There's like that. nothing, man. Where am I going to go? You know what I mean? And sure enough, boom, ash, boom, you think, again, you think that to Kevin's point earlier, you think the machines would have known that. Like they're like, you should go to Tide Shelter. One of them's like, oh, we've computed. You're fucked. Yeah, yeah. You are fucked. Well, you know, machines, these machines <laughs> built a certain I, I feel I like know. the machine would be like, all right, see you later. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna follow Kyle. Out. See but you guys real, later. But real talk, no, like, that Brainiac, was, come back. Yeah, that's what I was. That's how Brainiac got formed, yeah. right? In some of the comics, many like, of the well, comics, yeah. A super he's, AI of Krypton. He's or the reason that it gets destroyed in some. He's just, yeah, yeah, a thing on there. That's why I thought they were gonna go somewhere. Yeah, that, well, I mean, no. God. You want to you get, you get me started on all the cool things that could have happened from this fucking movie? Don't yeah. get me started. You'll be here another five hours. <laughs> Anyways, is this the one where they're like, "Hey, there was a one Kryptonian missing." Yeah. Oh yeah. Great. Oh, Kal-El well, we'll gets get in the it. ship, all these fucking dead corpses, one's open. And immediately, the fan theories, myself included, like, this makes sense. That was, one Kryptonian survived, went to an island, made a Themyscira, yeah, totally did this thing. It, it makes sense why there would be gods in this universe, in this grounded universe. No, there's, there's just no, gods. Oh, no, there's just gods. There's gods. <laughs> no reason that happened. That thing got out and it walked outside right. and was like, no fucking No future spoilers, yeah, guys. Yeah, right, it's also right. magic. <laughs> magic. Uh, Don't even get me started on all the, Have you seen all the stuff happen in Suicide Squad and they put out the parademons that should have been in the movie? Hoo wee, man. We could have had a good movie there. We didn't. <laughs> did <it. laughs> we didn't. We didn't. Could have had it. Anyways. <laughs> The planet collapses like when I put on a belt too tight. It's, just it's like an hourglass figure, but not the right the kind. The planet it looks makes like a hamburger. Right 
<laughs> it blows up. It is imploding. <laughs> so we <laughs> see all sorts of shit. Simultaneously exploding and imploding at the same time. <laughs> we shoot off to like Saturnish. The the you know the other side of the little wormhole opens up there and boom, baby Kal El shoots out. He's shooting through space. He's shooting by the moon. He's shooting into Earth. He's shooting into Kansas. He's gonna crash Kansas. Cut. First flashback of the movie, or not? Flash forward to the movie now, right? He's on We're, a shrimp boat. Yes. And here is Crap another. Boat. Hey man, what's a really popular television show in 2013? Boat fish. Deadliest catch. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I'm wanted, wanted, dead or alive. Cause shrimp every, ain't easy. That song is awful. Tim, Why you were like 15 when this show came out. You don't know, but everybody fucking knew Deadliest Catch, man. The Crabbers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good show. <laughs> we understood, man. It was fun. We got it. They're saying green. Our time. <laughs> like our you time. should understand that. The song they're Basically, playing sucks so the, bad. The way it, uh, the way it commutes or com, uh, computes for somebody as young as you, Tim. Yeah, it would be like us jumping forward and now he, uh, Kal-El's working as an extra or a PA on The Bachelor. Like that is the that's, oh, just, that's how that is, culturally important crab boats were. Do you that's remember when Captain Sid died? Oh my God, it was so it was sad. Dangerous. Thanks Thanks for, I, mean, I didn't have that context. This didn't make sense to me oh, without okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> so he's on this crab crabbing fish. boat <laughs> just get crabbing cancer. it up. You know, he's a green orange. He almost gets crushed. Of course, he couldn't get crushed, but the guys don't know that they save him. Like, oh my God, crab man. <laughs> they're like, right. Direct quote, yeah. <laughs> hey, crab man. And so like, we're on this boat. You're like, oh man, we're going to be here while well, we're not. They get a radio call. Hey, there's an oil rig on fire. Go see if you can my help. Favorite, my favorite thing is they're like, they get the radio they, call. They're like, oh, there's a giant oil rig on fire. The guy's like, really? And then the camera pans out, and it's like right in front of them. <laughs> <Yes>. All smoldering. <laughs> Which one? Inferno. Oh, how do we not see that? That's cr- I was looking over there. They were all up, and there's like, there's no we, way we can really help or whatever. And the camera's like, give me my binox. Green horn, he turns around. Green horn ain't there, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. did this green horn? Do you think they, they immediately? Oh, no, no, no. Why do they call him green horn again? Green horn is what you're. It's like rookie? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think? We knew this because of Deadliest Catch. Got These it. are not jokes. This is a reality. Yeah, we lived okay. it. Now, the correct procedure when there's someone missing on the boat, I think it's like for everyone to f- try to figure out if he fell overboard and Probably. spend the next like hour trying to find him. No, they have a they have to go to the thing for no reason. It's a billowing inferno that no, no, no. no but like of. you, you have to imagine yeah. that takes precedent over that, oh, 100%, right? Yeah. 100%. So they they probably just stopped and They're were like, like, "Well, we've already pointed he? the ship." That they already way. know they couldn't save him. They're looking for him. They're lifting up cushions. It doesn't mm-hmm. fucking matter. Mm-hmm. Over at the fucking oil rig, right? There's all these morons in the control room surrounded by fire. Now, <laughs> They're okay. like, oh, we only got enough oxygen for another day or whatever. Here's here's where I want to pause. Right? Here's where I want to pause. And this is this is this is one of the disappointments of this I'm movie. I'm back, baby. You are. You've been back for <laughs> you have been fifty one minutes and fifty five seconds. <laughs> It was so early in the movie, but I do I do want to I do want to pause here because this scene should be exciting and it feels like a chore. It feels like Which they one, just the no 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 the scene where he goes and saves the Inferno. people. What? Right? No way. It's not it's not exciting at all. There's zero he build up. A giant we don't pillar. have any empathy. We don't know any of these characters that are in this. He just opens the door and his chest is on, on fire. fire. But it, but what I'm saying is Man. this. In the other movie was the scene where Superman saves Lois, and there, and there was all this buildup, and it was a great scene. This, for some reason, the action sequences in this feel like they just had to get him done. We just mm. got to do it. What's the coolest thing? We, I, I don't know. Just put him on a thing. It's on fire. He'll do that. He'll jump across the thing. It'll be done. There's just like it's just so matter of fact. All this stuff, but the, the I, action starts getting <clears throat> boring. Well, uh, first off, the action I always want to see is Superman fight something, save something huge, which we get in the scene, but. What I appreciate about this doesn't come to later is then Lois going back through it. I think we get them so matter-of-factly and so quickly so that you understand that in a very uh, but this is the incredible first time, Hulk TV show, yeah. there's like a line that, right, that you're chasing as a journalist. But let's put it this way. If I were making this film, it's like it's 2013, okay? The last movie that Superman was in was, well, we, I guess Superman Returns. But the last real Superman movie was like, what, the 80s? We're seeing Superman Returns. He didn't pizza. do a lot of shit in that. This might be the first time a lot of modern audiences see Superman save someone for the first time. Fucking time, and we get a dude that's shirtless for no reason. Because why aren't his pants gone? He's I think shirtless. that's all they had to do, Nick. It's his, not just a dude, dude. His chest is, is so big, so fucking. He looks oh. great. That's not. That's not what I'm responding to. Were they to. born, born in lives? Now it's time to rank those abs. Holy shit! His upper. It's not about the abs in this one, ladies I'm, and gentlemen. Welcome to the rank those abs. It, it is like, about his shoulder definition in this. And it's Henry Cavill everything. didn't have a tremendous amount. Like he doesn't have Ryan Reynolds abs in this. Where like Ryan Reynolds just has that natural eight pack. There's moments where he kind of turns a little bit, and you see a little bit of a six pack. That's not what I want to draw attention to, ladies and gentlemen. It's when he turns around. His titties. Pay attention. 
even to his fucking upper back and his shoulders. They're so big in this. Yeah. And when he walks out of the water, he's just like, bro, does anyone know where the, the fucking gym is? Uh, is it over, I think it's over there. <laughs> and decides not to steal like the shirts that are hanging, which by the way, if you're going to hang laundry and it's really cold and wet outside, that shit ain't going to dry. It's not going to work. Do it. yeah. not gonna They're work. drunk. They didn't know. Um, but <laughs> I mean, Max, I mean his, his body in this looks amazing. His he did chest a great is job. unbelievable. So For me, it's such, a, it's, such a, it's such a dome spherical shape. When it's on his chest, like it's just this big ass titty. For me, man. it's when he's at the gravesite. Oh, at the end of the movie with Martha and he's there in that like Henley the button down gray Henley and his fucking. biceps <laughs> yeah. his arms his are huge his, biceps. his arms have abs like it's fucking insane yeah. God Andy bless can you, you give me some of this huh some release the facts I, I, I don't have a th- I don't want to make a <laughs> we're gonna release some facts on you here Henry Cavill refused to take steroids to muscle up for the role he also refused any digital touch ups <laughs> He refused any digital touch Which, by the way, you can tell. I mean, or enhancement again. to his body for in his shirtless scenes. He said it would have been dishonest of him to use trickery while playing Superman, and he wanted to push his body to the limits to develop his physique into one that was worthy of the character. And these cowards at Warner Brothers then were like, you know what? In the Justice League, we're going to fucking make you an upper lip. He has a hairy chest and left it untouched for the shoot of the movie. He insisted that Superman has chest hair. He rejected the notion that just because you're a muscular, you shouldn't have chest hair. And he cited the Superman comic book, The Death of Superman, as being an iconic representation in which Superman had chest hair. (laughs) In the shape of a symbol. Yeah, it's weird. Um, No, I mean, again, I like like all those choices. And and kudos to Henry Cavill, because getting that, that big, if he did do it naturally... Uh, is fucking hard. He talked about how he hard. used to be super overweight, and he was really surprised that he got the part. I think he's just really hard on he himself. Was not, super but I overweight. cannot picture him being overweight before <laughs> this movie. Uh, the only mo- other movie I remember seeing him in is The Immortals, and he was fucking cut in that movie. If yeah, I can say, you know, you're ridiculous. talking about how he's being hard on himself about his weight. Look in the mirror, bro. Look in the mirror. You're hard on yourself I'm for no reason. You look great. We love you. The man oh, thank you in the nice mirror. No, but I just mean I can't picture him being like out of shape. Sure, yeah. I don't think that image. You know, he almost missed a little fact exist. that got skipped. You know what I mean? He almost missed the call to get. Or he did miss the original call uh, to be Superman because he was playing Wow. Wow. He was playing Wow and raiding with his friends, and the phone rang, and he's like, "I can't get it right now, but I am. I know I'm up for this part." And, well, and then he finished and looked, and sure enough, it had been Zack Snyder. And Zach's like, hey, you only have five minutes to answer me back, and it's five and a half minutes. And he's like, damn it, I'm not saying But then Zach ended up being in the same raid with him. And he's like, oh, I need a a paladin to heal me. He's like, why weren't you healing me? Why were you calling me? (laughs) Before we move on, let me tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Honey. Why is it so hard to find coupon codes that actually work? Thanks to Honey, it doesn't have to be. I've been using Honey for years. It's a super easy extension you use. Anytime you're online shopping, it just automatically finds you active coupons that just save you money. Joey uses this all the time at Kind of Funny. Kind of Funny has saved thousands of dollars because of what Honey has saved us. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites like Target, Andy, Best Buy, Sephora, Macy's, eBay, Etsy. Ah, you know I love all those. ton of different sites. When you check out, this little box drops down. All you have to do is click Apply Coupons. You wait a few seconds for it to scan for every promo code on the internet, and then you just watch those prices drop. Uh, Honey has found it's over 18 million members, over $2 billion in savings. Uh, Honey sports over 30,000 stores online. It always surprises me uh sometimes when i'm like wow you actually have coupon codes for this super helpful stuff you use this right kev Mm -hmm. all the time very great i use it too it's really exciting because i've i've heard a lot of shows be sponsored by honey i'm like i want to be sponsored by honey because i I love the sponsored i started using that last sponsorship but i I legitimately use it it's fantastic time yeah it's it's so easy to do you just add the extension yeah that's the thing yeah (laughs) i love it because it's so easy where it's just like you set it once, you forget it, and then every single time it just automatically pops up. And you're like, why would I not want to save money? Sometimes it does the thing where it's like you have like 15 different like attempts that you can do, and it's like, all right, let's do it. And you sit there and let's it goes through it each out. one. Let's go. Uh, not using Honey is literally passing up free money. It's free to use and installs in just two clicks. You can get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash morning. That's joinhoney.com slash morning. Uh, next up, shout out to Raid. Raid has all the features you'd expect from a brand new RPG title, like an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. Uh, you can check out the graphics and details on those champions, and in Raid, you have the ability to personally personally customize and choose the artifacts and design a unique mastery build for each one of them. And the best part is, it's free to play. You can go right there to patreon.me slash kindoffunnyshowraid uh, to check that out now. More than 15 million players worldwide have already downloaded the game, and the best part 
part is. It's free to play. So you can just go and click on the link in the description box. Start playing now. Uh, clicking on this, you'll not just enjoy a uh, mobile game that's out now. You'll also be supporting this podcast. So why would you not want to do that? We, we like you guys. We, we support you. Please support us. Uh, not every RPG needs to be cartoony and cutesy. Enough with the candy, rainbows, unicorns, and bright colors. You can get real, raw, dark, epic, and awesome. Raid Shadow Legends will take you to the world of dark, fantasy, and realism. What are you waiting for? You can download Raid via the links in the description below. Patron.me slash kind of funny show Raid, which you also find below in the description. Get a special package with 100,000 silver, a whole bunch of other stuff. You can check out the details in the description below. And finally, shout out to Robinhood. 2020 is the perfect time to start thinking about 2040. With Robinhood, you can invest in the markets and earn interest with a competitive APY on uninvested cash. They make it easy to get started and learn as you grow with an intuitive app experience and no commission fees on trades. And stock prices don't have to hold you back. You can buy a piece of a company you love for as low as a dollar and build your portfolio little by little. You can buy one share. You can buy half a share. You can buy three three and a quarter shares. It's up to you, Andy. You can do whatever you want, man. Versions, yeah, it's your budget, your goals. Andy, buy five-sixths of a share. Okay. You, you probably could. You 80%? probably could. You can go to morning.robinhood.com to learn more and claim your free stock. That's morning.robinhood.com to learn more and claim your free stock. Because uh, your, your first stock is on the house when you set up your account. Morning. Dot Robinhood.com. Uh, annual percentage yield APY on uninvested cash is paid by program banks and is variable. Robinhood Financial is not a bank. The free stock offer is subject to terms and conditions. All investments involve risk. Other fees may apply. Visit <coughs> rbnhd.co slash fees. I need to learn how to read that part really fast. Kevin, can you, you know teach me about stocks? Uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, they're stocks! Easy. You, stocks! You, put, you have two of them. You put them on your feet. Man, what a joke about socks. Are you kidding me over there? Oh, stocks. Wow, Nick. So, wow. So Greg is back, but you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Lord of the Rings, bro. So Lord he the busts in there. They, he's on fire. He gets these guys up to the helipad. A thing comes in. Oh, and God. We're he still starts here. to notice the tower crushing. But it's a great part here yeah. where he runs over and stops it. And then he just like, ah, and he's pushing back his feet, pushing against the thing as it melting yeah kind of. his back like looks apart, so right? sexy in this yeah, yeah exactly he, looks he, he gets he holds it long enough the helicopter gets out he falls in the water and he does like the if you're an audio listener that's me shutting my eyes yeah. and then fa- falling back a bit I don't know one more time do it for audio listeners one more time at some point, we had a flashback, too, in this. This is the flashback. This is the flashback. The flashback here is to him in school. This is what we talked about earlier. We'll go a little bit quicker so here. So seeing his mom. Exactly. He sees through the teacher. His super hearing's kicking in. He's flipping out. We see Lana. That's cool. We saw all this different stuff. He's like, Why did it only whoop, start whoop, when he was, whoop. like, in third grade? I think the he had finally adjusted the everything, the, the radiation. radiation. Maybe like, lost control of it. She seemed like she already knew about it. Yeah. Like, you know, she's like, focus on me. You know, make the world small. Like, it's an ongoing problem. You're a kid. Think about it when you're a kid. Could you control your erections? You couldn't. No. There's popping up left and Still right. Still can't school. sometimes. Yeah, exactly. God, I remember. I remember like having to go to for yeah, physicals, like, and where they put the, the doctor puts a finger underneath your body at the cough. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, they, for, and, like athletic physicals, sure, and I'd always yeah, be no. so scared that I'd get a boner for like no sure, reason. Like sure. I, before, I had been thinking like, don't don't think about boobs, Andy. Don't think about boobs. Yeah. You'll get a boner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever get a boner? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Good. It's too you bad. It's fun jokes playing your doctor and poke him in the eye. You're back, Nick. You're back. <laughs> oh, God. Make the world... We already talked about this. Make the world small, Clark. I'll make the world small, Clark. All right. When he <laughs> makes the world small... <laughs> I'm choking on my own love of poking doctors in the eye of my dick. Well, also cool that he burned the... He uh, did the, you know, heat vision to warm up the handle to burn the kit. The yeah. teacher's hand. The teacher's hand, yeah. Anyways... <clears throat> Kind of she says Clark over theory. and over again in a comforting way. We cut back to the ocean. He wakes up there. Boom. Eyes open, right? Then he comes ashore. Uh, like See whales. About. I, love, I love this shot. I like, the, I love the shot of him out there and there, there's just these giant things helping him or being around being him. Being around him. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's, he's just a part of everything. I think it's cool. I believe it was either... Well, it was either... I think it was Lucy last night when we were watching it. And it was like, Clark, Clark. And he wakes up and the whales and they're like... Boom. She goes, you think they're saying Clark? <laughs> like, <"Boom." laughs> this is where we get the... Boom, boom. The music starts. Oh my god! So he, he washes ashore, and then he does the thing where he runs up like fucking Incredible Hulk. But in oh no, that's not that. This is part where he leaves the bar. He runs that. up there. He gets yeah. the clothes down. Like we're talking about why your clothes out in the rain doesn't matter. Gets it all the stuff. Oh, is this the part with the music that I? Hate? I feel like it's this the part. This bow, is the bow, 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 bow. yeah. And when it, it comes has short. like lyrics and shit. Yeah, he's a Soundgarden guy. He's a Soundgarden guy, right? Oh, yeah. Chris Cornell, really? I think oh, so. rest in peace, man. Can you check on that for me, Bear? It didn't sound. It just sounded like any. 
fucking mid-90s, southern rock yeah. band that whenever I go back home, it's always on the radio. Yeah. It's like, God, this. So Clark gets some clothes and he goes into town in this Alaska village, right? And he's like looking around and then he sees a school bus and he's like, Pfft. I remember a school bus. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, Chris Cornell. Cornell. Oh. I remember a school bus. And so then we're on the school bus, right? And it's Pete Ross. This is where it's getting... Oh, this is my man. What a Game Over Greggy show we're about to have. Oh, all right, come wow. on, man. It's not even what it's called. No, it's later. We've called that for a while. <laughs> it's later. We're no, going back to Kevin, roots. <laughs> Kevin, do you understand what jazz is? All right. When I podcast, like jazz? it is jazz. <laughs> all right. Don't get in here and be like, that's not the right note to hit. Because I'll tell you, We're listen here. Salad. Listen here, you square. Go back to music theory class. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Fuck you. There was so much liquid in that lab. <laughs> There's so much. Guys, I'm having such a good time. 2020 has been great for kind of funny, but this is fucking a great. So show I left too. a second. Where Stop. are we? <laughs> We're We're we, we haven't gotten out of the water yet. <laughs> no, got it, got we it. have. Don't lie. We're at the school bus, right? Pete Ross is mean to him. Lana's like, eh. Did you see the game? Did you see the game, Dick Wild? Like, what a weird fucking question. Ass this fucking man. guy. You know what I mean? And while this happens, the bus driver just loses control of the fucking bus. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I need to cut that together. I think he dies. I forget. Is I that think what he happened? Yeah, like, 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 later, like, as it's crashing, he's like on the Yeah, he, like, he loses control and off the side of a bridge. Epic shot. It goes in there. The guy who was like on- oncoming traffic is like, I'm about to go to jail for the murder of 26 children. <laughs> he's like, looking at the oh, inside. Every- There's oh. nothing more fucked up, though, than. The other car, like, looking over and just being like, that is a school bus full of children and that are he, all dying. Hearing kids yelling. And doing nothing. <laughs> and like, you, you have to think yeah, that the guy, yeah, the guy like, doing nothing. Right? The emergency exit in the back, yeah. right? Anyways, yeah, these kids are yeah. all fucking dumb as rocks. Why? They're in Kansas. Yeah, I said it. And so they're going underwater. <laughs> they're all trying to breathe up there. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Oh, there's no one. Don't open the doors. What do I do? Kansas kids! Hey, Lana. They all have like two teeth. They're all fucking little Kansas hey, dude, kids. Do you think we can breathe underwater? No one's ever told me we can't. Kiss not. me one last time, Nick, sis. You see what you're doing? <laughs> Nick is doubling down. <laughs> we are on. Kevin, do you want to be on or do you want to be off? Because you're off right now and I need you on. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Anyways, the bus completely submerges. <laughs> it's all over for these punk kids, right? Dead like tuna in a can. No, it ain't, Andy. <laughs> What? <laughs> dead like two dead a can, but they ain't dead. <laughs> the bus comes up on the the shore. Water's pouring out. Uh, girl looks back. Lana probably looks back. Right. Door is open. Water's pouring out. Oh my god! It's Clark. Clark did it. And then he gets it to a stable spot, and he's all like, shy about it. He jumps back in the water. He goes down and comes back up with Pete Ross's fat ass, <laughs> <laughs> like a beast whale. Oh, where did I come from? Like, oh. How did he get out of the car? Right? Wasn't the door still closed? <laughs> you know what? You feel like maybe he was the one that figured it out. Yeah, like, open the, the window was like, kids. I'll get out, but not swim. <laughs> you didn't that, that Pete was like, you didn't that Pete was like this. Please, that, I that, can't that, laugh that hard. <laughs> here's my theory. That, it's it, a typical Kansas problem. Yeah. Oh, there's a bunch of light up there. It's dark down out there. Control. I better what swim do I do? down. I'm Pete Ross from Kansas. <laughs> I don't know which way is up. Nobody ever taught me my directions. Oh my God, what a show. <laughs> Nick, what, what do you have to say? Oh, I was going to say, here's, what I th- here's my theory on Pete mm-hmm. Ross. He's the smartest out of all these kids. Realizes that his teacher grades on a bell curve. That's right. If all the kids are dead, his C Clark. becomes an A all of a sudden. Clark saves him. Then we cut back to the Kent farm. We're there. Uh, it's Pete it. and his mom, Not right? Who are job. like, hey, like, no, this is a real thing. This is what's going on. Your kid's got superpowers. He was sent here by God. Shout out to Lana. And mm-hmm. shout out to the Fordman boy, Whitney Foreman uh, from Smallville, a character invented for the TV show Smallville, also oh, incorporated in this that's pretty cool. Thank you. I really liked the, the flashbacks <laughs> of him when he was a kid. I feel like every single one, the kid actors. The kid looks great. Did really, they, yeah, they, yeah, looked, yeah, yeah. They, they were cast perfectly. And I, I really thought that the, the scenes <clears throat> added to the themes of the story. And like really, like to me, made this movie why I think it's good and not bad. <laughs> And like seeing him, like like the fear of him, where he's yeah. like, I had to fucking save them, but yeah. like I'm dealing this right now. Very, and that's the great thing, cool. Jonathan and Martha trying to push it off. Sorry, you want to go? I was just gonna say, like seeing Pete's progression from being a bully to like when we see him as being an, an adult. IHOP manager. <laughs> <laughs> that's what yeah, you get, like, Pete. But like, it, it's it, yeah, there there is character growth. Like when he sees Superman, you can see that he's like. Yeah, you know, except, like, except this he's is, also hanging out with the bullies later. You no, know, hanging out with the bullies later, and immediately. The guy that saved his life when he was a kid. Otherwise, Pete would still be sleeping with the fucking fish down at <laughs> Smallville Lake or whatever the hell this reservoir was. Right, creator, like. uh, he goes like this. This guy saved my... And obviously, we've kept this fucking secret for 20 years. And, and no, I, he I've immediately kept, snitched. He immediately snitches on it. Hey, I'm looking for someone who has superpowers. Oh, you mean Clark? Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Sorry, I had to snitch on him. Like, Cool Greg! I need, a, I need somebody to weigh in. Cool Greg! 
Probably a shotgun. Let's just wait. Can I get you one qu- real quick? Qu- you can use Nick's mic there real quick. I'm sorry. Oh. Is it shock mic up? Shock mic. Uh, hey, is it cool to snitch on someone who saved your life? No. Thank you very much, yeah, Corey. No, okay, cool. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> Good answer. Clark runs <laughs> out of the house. So scared? Clark runs out of the house. I mean, Jonathan follows. We have the first real exchange here, father and son, right? And it is this conversation of, <clears throat> should I let him die? Maybe. Right? Again, not the take I want, but a very interesting take. I'm, I'm along for the ride. Let's see where we can go it. with these themes. And it is that, okay, ma- you know, Clark, there's all these things, and it's the beginning of your, it's, are you going to be good? Are you going to be bad? I don't know. But, yeah. thing, but Clark asked the question of, like, where did I come from? Finally, yeah, finally, but, right? and, and I, I like, I, I'll agree with you. I'm like, it's an interesting take. It's not traditional. The traditional take would have had been for him to do something bad and have his dad be like, you can't do that. That, to me, would have been a little bit more... Uh, traditional, but I think the stakes would have been a little bit higher because we never. Boring. We've seen that too many sure, times. But, 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 no, but we, the problem is he never does anything wrong in this. So at no point do we ever think he's going to make a decision to be bad and be the emperor of the fucking world. Yeah, but that's why I like it more because I feel like he's being scolded he's so for cool. being good. But I feel I feel like it would have been such an interesting concept to have him do something like beat the shit out of a kid and then be like, oh, I'm suffering the ramifications but, of this. And then when Zod comes and offers him that power, he is conflicted. He's not conflicted at all in this movie. He has like, there's really no growth at all for his character, period. And I think that might be one of the biggest issues with the You're, film. I'm with you here, right? Of like, and we've talked about the scene already, but it'll be flashback later uh, coming on, right? Where the kids push him to the ground and he, he bends the fence with his hand, yeah. right? There, if he would have lost his cool and hurt that person, and then Jonathan mm-hmm. could have had that conversation of like, you are here and you, you know, you're playing with uh, every advantage here. You can't hurt people. You can't do this. You can't kill people. Like right. Drive it home. That. <laughs> but how and great, then have that moment that is so great, especially you know, not knowing how many shots you're gonna get at this. Thanks, cool G. Got a blow my nose. How many shots you're gonna get at this? To have that moment from the animated series, right, of like Superman confronting Darkseid. Where it was that thing of like, I've had to hold back my entire, entire life. life. This yeah. entire world's made of cardboard and tissue paper. Yeah. I don't have to hold back with you. I yeah. can go. I love that. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say like, uh-huh. I, I do kind of feel like they get a little bit of that conversation when he's with the bullies and he grabs onto the fence and later he's I talking to him. So yeah, bad, yeah. They, they, and they're like, I want you to hit him. I want to hit him too. Maybe you should. That, but that's the thing. Like, and and I just feel like, how much better would that have been character wise if he'd have hurt that kid and then saved him twenty years later? And we would have had that arc of like, I'm now choosing to be a good person and I've, I'm repaying you by like, you're the IHOP manager and you're about to get killed. And we have that moment of like, if, you, if it would have been Pete or something like that, yeah, I don't yeah. know. But in this, it's just, he just has so much restraint from the get go that you're like, I just don't <clears> find it believable that this theme, this deep theme that we're trying to explore, I don't buy it because he's a, he's a Boy Scout from the beginning and he never has any conflict. I'm, I like that, man. I feel like it's so cookie cutter to just be like, hey, this, like we've seen a million times before. Let's Spider-Man, see the exact Spider-Man. same <laughs> thing. It's like, I like that he's a good dude. It's like he's a good dude and the earth he's on is not good. And like the people around him are not good, but he needs to be good and yeah, he the, believes in it. I, I, think I, the, I think the dynamic that we see have that conflict is society around him. Is the people living around him, and and I and I'm, I totally get that, and they definitely did that. But the movie's called Superman. Do you yes. see what I'm saying? It's called Man of Steel. Like it's a movie about this one character. He's in every fucking scene, almost. Not really. All I'm saying is, I just <laughs> feel like not in every scene. For, for, it, for, the, not in it. for <laughs> the landing they're trying to stick, I just think they needed a stronger father figure. They needed Jonathan to be more comic book Jonathan and less of. The, and I, I, there can be that ambiguity. Just I feel like before he goes. There should have been a conversation that is very much and like again, I was wrong. Like, don't. It's not a good or bad thing. You're clearly going to be a good person. Lois knows it from the jump, right? Where he's like, just stop doing. Like, why, why don't you go into hiding or whatever? Or he says, maybe I'll just go away. And she's like, I know from a little bit. I know about you. I know that's not an option. Like, it is. I think is he can't stop helping people. But and that, but that's the problem, right? A movie where the character is the same at the very beginning as he is at the 100%. end is not good. That's not good storytelling. I think it would have been so much more fascinating if we had less Jarrell, more of the honest, like traditional Jonathan Kent. And then when Zod came, it was this other option that he had secretly considered because we'd seen him do <coughs> that a little bit. And then finally, he has that precipice where he's like, "I'm either gonna go one way or the other." And the audience actually believes, like, "Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Ray will be a dark side. We don't know. Like, we don't know if that's gonna happen. What an exciting." and scary thought of what happens if Superman decides to, to go with Zod. Humanity is fucked, and then boom. No, I'm not going to do that. But at no point do we ever think he's on the ship, he's going to get convinced to do that. No, it's just let not, alone and that's you, not fun. To your point, let alone what a more interesting, don't laugh me, other than please, what a more interesting Batman v Superman that would have made to have Bruce and Batman have that that knowledge, right? Right, of that, you almost sure, chose Sure, at the end he us. did all this stuff, but he had done this, and I've looked into that, and I know that right. like he can use his power for people. He's done yeah. this, like he is human, like he does. Right now he's just, fucked up a lumber truck, <laughs> okay? 
tires. Yeah. <laughs> the insurance clearly covered that. And yeah. who knows? Maybe the transmission was going on that truck anyway. Yeah, exactly. I digress. We all digress. Uh, so you're going to kill him. You're an alien. Let's go look at the ship. They look at the ship. Great scene here of like, you know, will I still get to, will I still be your son? You always be like, I love that. And Kevin Costner is yeah, great. so great. Yeah. For as much as I don't like his Jonathan in a traditional sense, I like his performance. Anyways, cut back to Alaska. I'm just going to keep saying it unless somebody corrects me. Sure. Uh, and now he's working at this bar, right? There's a bar. The truck guy dr- drives up. He gets out. Reminds me a lot of the I've never seen garbage. He garbage guy before from Superman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he goes in there. Uh, you know, there's a woman there. And, like, Clark's cleaning glasses. And he's doing all the bartender stuff. And then this guy, this guy he gets all handsy. He's like, ah. But this scene makes no sense to me. No. She goes, he goes, she goes, Clark, it's not worth it. I'm like, what? Did you do your job? Bounce this guy. He just sexually well, he's assaulted. A he's a bartender. This girl. G- get up and be like this. Get out. Or what? Or I'm calling the cops. They doesn't need. I don't need to leave town forever just because this guy pushed me and he's smaller than me. But like, it's like again, I, in terms of storytelling, it could be stronger. But he hears these two military dudes talking. The Americans are up there in this thing. They found this crazy thing. Like for him, even though it kind of, and correct me if I'm wrong, seems like this is all happened by happenstance and destiny. He's immediately like, oh, that sounds like something I should be a part of. Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like it would have been stronger mm-hmm. if he was getting called north, like in yeah. the in the Donner cut, right? Like or Donner movies. Yeah, all but that it, stuff I thought was really bad, just because it is very just like, oh, right, so cool. thank God I was here this one day. But also, but I just in no world like we've seen the same scene in every fucking movie, like Terminator, whatever. It's like, oh, you don't, you're picking a fight with a guy you shouldn't be picking a fight with. Cool. Right. I've never seen a movie where it's this unbelievable. You do not look at that man. I'm gonna kick your ass, like, Henry Cavill. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna Kevin you right now. I'm just gonna keep fucking yeah. going. But it's like Kevin does it to me. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin would do it to Henry Cavill. Cavill. Kevin knows he'll beat your ass. So, yeah. yeah, you don't do it to a guy that's like six foot three and just looks like he fucking tore a tree out of the ground with his bare hands and then deadlifted it for forty five fucking minutes. <laughs> I love the way that like there's a point where the dude throws the can at him and the way it bounces, yeah, yeah. it like it. It's just so well done that, like, it hit a wall. Well, yeah. the same more when, he when he shoves him. Yeah. him. I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, here's the problem I have with the scene, right? He walks out, exacts immediate revenge on this guy. So it's you're such not a, a good guy. Way. That's a douchey yeah. thing to do. And B, you leave the woman in there with this this group of assholes who now, are then going to keep harassing her and keep getting more drunk. What the fuck is he saying totally about this character? And I can be wrong, but they shared a look earlier, him and the, bo- the waitress, and then she calls him sweetie. And so it is that thing of, like, are, they are, fucking, you are you guys already fucking? And then he just leaves. <laughs> yeah. He's done. Good luck with these no, sweetie fucking Pour a beer on me. That's back a Kansas on my shoulder. sweetie. That's an Alaska sweetie. No, but, Alaska no, but, sweetie. No, Kansas the, sweetie would be very different. You're only my second cousin. Jesus, you're attacking the whole state. Oh, I am. What are you going to do? M-I-Z. They can't, they can't figure out how podcasts work. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they're on dial-up internet there, shitting in a hole outside, covering it up. They just said they're trying to get, they're trying to converse with their dial-up. They just go, bro, 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 back at you. How come I can't get the internet machine to work? I can already see the Reddit thread. Just, they're they're going to hate us so much. Oh, my God. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be easy to see. Like, there'll be all these typos in the headline. You know what I mean? <laughs> but just keeps posting pictures of their mom slash girlfriend. Understand. We went to kids. We had a good time. No. Oh, we went to Missouri, we Kevin. Went to right, we right, went right, to right. Missouri, See, that's Kevin. How confusing the greatest state in this great union. <laughs> but hold sorry, on. Kansas. To, hey, to, good luck in the Super Bowl. Sorry, Kent. Missouri. Aren't they, is that the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? Yes. Uh, yeah, Kansas City, Missouri, Missouri where you were. So <laughs> fucking um, confusing. I will say that the yeah. So to go along with the sweetie thing, there was also that moment where they eye each other down. Uh-huh. Where he and the she looks at his dick. She looks at his dick. Yeah, like the little cute little nod. And I think they were fucking. Yeah. But that's my thing. If you were fucking me oh, and someone patted me on the ass and I didn't like it, let's just say there's a world where I, I was going to say, what alternate like reality it. are we in? And, <sighs> and, and, and I was like, person. and I looked at you of like, hey, could you help me out with these three guys that, I mean, you know, maybe I said it's just so I could do one of these guys, but like three guys is really hard to fight these guys. I do one of these right? guys. I fuck up one of these guys, but three guys, could you maybe help me out with the, Oh, you're walking out the door. Where are you going? You know, I'm never see you again. Yeah, I'm leaving. I just never but see I still, you again. It seemed like he has good memories when Lois shows up later. I digress. So, yeah. Yeah, now we're up in the, either further. Well, we see him hitchhike further Alaska, right? Chopper lands, door opens, it's Lois Lane. Big reveal, right? And then Big guess reveal. what? <laughs> Forty-five minutes into the movie, we see the other main character. I now, here, here, let me let me get you a little uh, facts here, Greg. Sure. What's it called again? Release the facts. Release the facts. Hashtag release the facts. It's a Snyder cut reference, everybody. Yeah. Yes. They get yes. It. Do they? <laughs> They, they get it. A lot of people don't get the you know the fucking greatness of Batman v Superman, so I'm gonna spell it out. This for is all Amy Adams' fans. third time auditioning for Lois Lane. She first read for Lois Lane in Brett Ratner's abandoned film, then for Superman Returns in 2006. She Adams has stated that. that it has become ridiculous, and this time she had to play Lois and put her stamp on it. Oof! Shout out to oh, Amy sure Adams, did. of course, an alum of Smallville season one. Well, oh, really? She? She was the fat girl who then got the kryptonite stuff happened. She got uh, really skinny, yeah. but the only way to stay skinny was to eat like 
full horses and eventually people. And so there's this great scene of <laughs> Amy Adams. <laughs> it's Amy Adams with this totally horrible CG mouth. Barrett, please pick this it up. This is in the show? This yeah, is oh show. yeah, this is legit. This is legit. You Barrett, find it. it. You love this I'm show. I'm finding so just it. I love Amy Adams a eating a person. <laughs> Some Marvel majority said, what did she have in her mouth right well, now? people, human beings. She unlocks okay. it like a well, python. it's the same thing. Yeah, uh, exactly. If you put Amy Adams' small veal mouth, you'll find it. Uh, she comes off the plane. Guess who helps everybody? It's Clark. He's there. Another odd job. He knew the military was up to some shit. Mm-hmm. Puts her down. She's there immediately. And I again, I, I'm, I'm going out on a limb. I don't know how everybody's gonna feel. I think Amy Adams does a great patrol, great portrayal of the Lois Lane I know from the comics. Mm-hmm. Of I'm a real reporter. I'm this thing. You're not gonna push me down. I love meeting Christopher Maloney, Guardian. We'll call him the rest of the thing because mm-hmm. he's the Guardian. Uh, and being like, there it is. Yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> Amy yeah. Adams, everybody. That Chuck. is such an After oh, Effects no. like puppet tool. <laughs> Video Does yeah. com. Does yeah. Superman kill her eventually in this world? No, Superman doesn't kill. Snaps course. her neck. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun fact. Just, every episode you of Smallville, the, you, you break the jaw. She can't eat. Then you know. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, like just look at the that's, picture. <laughs> that's the scream mask. <laughs> like look at the top left picture. <laughs> like, oh, what happened? <laughs> they're just like, yeah, hey, man, we're gonna craving. put this on TV. Hey, man. It was a different CW back then. Oh, yeah. Anyways. That's horrifying. Uh, uh, by Lo- the way. Lois' portrayal here, I think, is great. She's immediately in the general's face. Like, ah, oh, we're expecting you tomorrow, Miss Lane. And she's like, that's why I came today. Like, listen, we're both here because the Canadian courts overruled your injunction. I have to be taken care of. I have to cover this. I love that. I love that they, they were like, let's attempt to make her more of a well-rounded character, a strong character who's not just getting saved all the time. <clears throat> and then for the rest of the movie, she just gets saved all the time. Sure. I think I, I like her reporting skills coming up, but we'll get there. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they're there. Stay inside. Piss in the bucket. Uh. You know, at night it gets below a million degrees here. Oh my god, that's really yeah, fun. Cold. Jacket. And of course, she doesn't listen. It goes out at night, and it's not that cold. And she has a camera. Well, she has a picture of uh Superman walking well, she gets around it. without a shirt. Right? She gets the photo when she goes Don't out touch there. Me. She gets the photo Don't when she goes me. out touch there. Don't touch me. Touch you. Touch it. Ew. For those viewers don't know. This suit leaves little of the imagination below the belt. So little, uh, and he keeps tugging it. It's also getting no, more and more to damp as we go. Oh my god, you don't so want to see my fine. armpits. I'll show yeah, you right now. Um, so no, he, she walks out there, starts taking photos. Immediately catches in the viewfinder a uh, one Clark Kent over there. We don't know in another white Henley just walking. And like ah, that was forty below. Yeah, that's weird. Imperious to cold. So she fo- she goes over there, impervious, impervious. impervious. <laughs> she impervious follows him over curse. there. She hikes around the fucking side, and guess what? There's this giant hole in the ice because Clark's been burning it. Oh, by the way, they explained that there's this fucking thing we saw here. It's down in the ice. It's got a you know million years around it. Twenty thousand years old. Oh, by the way, it's like forty thousand years old. Whoa. Another shout out though here is that of course we're introduced to Emil Hamilton here, right? The guy from West Wing. Excuse the, me. Doctor. Oh, Hamilton. got it. Okay, got it. The guy Love who's him. at the thing, uh, typing originally, and eventually gets woken up by the rumble. He played Emil in Smallville. I digress. That's great. Um, cuts the, <laughs> she goes and they're like, oh man, there's this giant cut or whatever, and she walks all the way through. And guess what? It's, it's Clark on the other side over there. He's been heat visioning all the way through this fucking thing. What a, what a great cool. way to introduce heat vision too. Just kind of have it. It's already not been introduced. Be done. Was it? Yeah. Was it when he was a little kid? Yeah, he, he warmed up the thing, burned his teacher's hand. Copy that. Got it. I'll move on. He gets in there. Guess what, everybody? It's a giant old spaceship. He walks over there, and he has his little fucking crest symbol, and he puts his little crest in there, and he's like, cool. And as he does that, fucking another Kryptonian robot warms up behind him. He turns around. He's like, how are you doing this? And he's like, creepy, dude. Very he's scary. like, oh, fucking Jesus Christ. And he grabs him, and it's all wrapped around his arm. He's like, ah. I think it cut his arm. He's like, ah. And he's like, and he's, ah. And he slams it in, and then it's like, oh, it's cool. Did it cut him? Yeah, he had a cut on his yeah. uh, Henley, whatever. Like it like whipped cut his shirt. I didn't whatever. like any of this. Stuff. I mean, it's red. Yeah. I didn't like the thing fighting. It's just like it, it just totally yeah. broke the immersion from me. Like this is supposed to be realistic. This is your first time dealing with alien shit, and you're just way too cool. You're like you're yeah. dealing with this like way too well. I know you're super strong and well, shit, but it's, it's the same all, thing. Oh, you mean that part? So of when it? he tells his mom, "Mom, I found where I'm from," and Diane Lane goes, "Wow." <laughs> well, she's trying to fake mom enthusiasm. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's moms are bad. bad at faking enthusiasm trust that's me true. I know um, sorry Jimmy so he, he pops thing in oh it's your cool whatever and then he starts looking around and there's this fucking crusty old Australian dude walking around in some kind of weird witch robe and he's like what the fuck and he starts following her, him around he's going left and he's going right and he's going through things and, and what and then Lois Lane comes in we're not there yet just, but yeah okay go ahead. he walks through the chambers and that's where he finds the bodies there's some dead ones in there there's one open never be touched on again don't even bother getting excited about it everybody one of the many breadcrumbs in this that leads to a brick fucking wall thanks for nothing WB how excited were you Andy, when you saw an empty <laughs> an empty one I didn't even <laughs> how excited were you when fucking Aragon found a new arrow you know what I mean though come on get in my shoes for a second remember when he's like oh shit a <laughs> new one <laughs> This was new. He, 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 he got goes a new with my sword. new sword. Yeah. yeah, he got an old sword fixed, right? 
He's wandering Aragorn. around, being like, "What the fuck's going on?" No, he's talking about the we're talking about the dragon, right? All right. And then on the outside, yeah, Lois walks in. She walks over there. She's got her camera. She walks in the thing. She's like, "Oh, this doesn't look scary at all, right?" And she takes a photo of it. I forget. He didn't meet. Does he meet Jor-El here and get two seconds or no? That I happens think, later, right? I think he tells him the story here, right? Where we get that awesome. No, that's when they 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 go off in the ship oh, together. That's when, he gets that's when you suit. get that's all right, the stuff. That's right. That's right. So I can't remember right now if you saw any of Jor-El. It doesn't in, matter if they actually talk. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Henry's doing it's interrupted by the fact that Amy Adams is getting fucked up by this robot. He runs out that there. That robot shocked the fuck out of her. Yeah, stabbed her. Yeah. And so he gra- he he sees it and he's like, oh, and he grabs the fucking thing and he crushes the thing and he ah, crushes it real good. And he walks over to her and he looks at her X-ray vision, of course. Oh, you got internal bleeding. I'm gonna have to do this. It's gonna hurt. And she's like, how do you? How can you do this? And he's like, I can do things people can't. Man, you're fucking. Ah! She's Another great line delivery written by and a, a terrible line. It's just not nothing. That was I, mean, I can do things other people can't. Oh, okay. Like yeah, well, you got that's that's the uh, this is the first time they're really meeting and you're saving your life. It's totally this is what you could have done with this. To what the movie is. It just, it just seems like every big moment that should have been an important moment lacks pacing. It lacks setup. It lacks tension. It's just kind of it's almost like Zack Snyder was like, none of it matters. Let's just get to the point where they punch each other in the sky. Let's just get and, to that. And point. this is a movie you think is good. I think that it's got a lot of yeah. great good elements to it. Yeah. And it's it's just it's like a it's like a really big buffet. Where some of it's good and some of it's not, but you have to eat the whole thing. You know what I mean? I, just like, don't, I don't think it does anything that's not overly how buffets offensive. Work. You that don't have to eat the whole <clears> thing. <throat> that, that's my thing with this movie. I don't think it does anything overly offensive where you're like, fuck, that is an awful you thing. Don't Why think, would they do that? You it's don't not, think it's Jonathan not, Kent being like, that was dumb. But it's not, it, again, yeah, but I'm with you, dumb, Andy. It's but not, like, I don't think it's overly It's not yeah, any yeah, one yeah, thing. It's just, it's the culmination of these little misses, I think. The thing with Jonathan Kent, before we move on, right, of him sacrificing himself, the whole scene, going back for the dog, all that shit. That part doesn't work. Again, it strikes me as such a good writing room moment, putting down a script of like, what how Clark explains it, right? It's my father gave my life to protect my secret until he thought the world was ready. Why he didn't think the world was ready in, what is that, 20? 10 years earlier. Yeah, 2003. I don't fucking know. I can't answer. It's just like, it's also unrealistic to me that anyone... Anyone here, if they had the power, would not no, save their father. Save that. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, that would sorry. be the point where you overcome it. Let's right? get right. to that. We'll, we'll discuss that when we get to that. Yeah. But this moment, like, this hour. was a great opportunity for them to have some level of chemistry together, and they just had zero in this. It's so flat. It's so overdone. And then she screams, and then we're out. And it's like, dude, one little line of like something with the smile where she where it put her at ease would have like been this nice heartwarming moment where charm. we actually yeah a little charm where we actually thought oh maybe these characters will fall in love but at the end when they kiss it feels so fucking weird well, to they, me. I feel like it only feels weird because they shouldn't be kissing in that situation I don't think he needs any more charm like he he's yeah, just I just don't think he's charming at all he doesn't need to be She's, she's but just but like that's, that's, but that's the, the big problem with this movie is that yeah he's stupid hot but when he opens his mouth W- nothing comes out of any relevance and like mm. Lois Lane is this incredible like sure he's Superman but like I don't know give him some humanity to to, to, to bond with this woman on this level Did you otherwise not it just feels superficial I think the scene of which we're about to get to if we can keep going of them we at cannot. the gravesite <laughs> talking over Jonathan Kent and explaining why I think that is a big moment for them bonding and her just uh, again now and I uh, however you want to take it but like a bulldog reporter that Lois Lane is always portrayed as yeah. like when she comes back and tells Perry it's off like I'm not doing it anymore. Like he knows something's wrong because Lois would never do that. Right. And so for the fa- I I feel even though it's not for, to your uh, to your level, you know, shown instead of told, I I got that out of that. I got what an important moment that was for them. At- yeah, I get it. I just I just again I think back to like a more charismatic Superman actor, Christopher Reeves, sure. right? Where he's he's they're having that weird kind of inappropriate interview on her balcony, and Pink. he's. Yeah, you know, oh, sorry. You know, like it's kind of goofy, kind of silly, kind of whimsical, but it's flirty. It's, yeah, there's yeah. a flirtation there. And in this, it's just not. No, I, I totally agree well, with you 100%. She just got shot by a thing. Oh, no, no, like, I mean, this no, 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 I mean the entire the movie. Entire, I got it, yeah. Clark no, and Lois storyline, they should not have kissed in this movie. Yeah, at no point it should have been buy. at the end when he walks in as the new stringer and she looks up. That's more like, the, huh, huh, you know, like, oh, oh, shucks kind of thing of like, yeah. we really, really like each other. Anyways, I digress. Keep digressing, brother. Uh, the ship raises out of the ice. It wakes up. Smallville's Emil Hamilton. Emil? Em- em- I can't say Emil. Em- you know, you know. I read. You know, you read em- these fucking things for em- years em- and years. It's E-M-I-L. E-M-I-L. Oh. Emil Hamilton, I believe, right? Uh, Doctor Hamilton from Smallville wakes up. He's like, oh, and they all run outside. They all see the ship float off. And they're like, we just saw some fucking shit here. You know what I mean? A spaceship flew out of the ground. Mm-hmm. It, it's just absurd that she then goes and writes this thing, and the dude's like, no, we we can't. Uh, you yeah, might have I mean, it's it's the government. This. I've, I yeah, it's trust not the government. So she then no, leaves. The, she goes to Perry the White. The opponent is the yeah. government. No, I'm with Tim on this one, 100. Yeah. Like I, what? who saw the as a journalist, like you can't do that. 
Like I, what? she saw this in journalism though. school. There's no way if I saw an alien spaceship and I came in and I'm the only source, and I I, I admit that I got stabbed. There's a wound. There's this. Okay. I could have okay. been doing. That you're mm-hmm. anybody's like I'm not going to war with the U.S. government over this. Like you have to be on lock, ready to go. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna take on a, an organization that powerful. Like she's like I have corroborated civilian witnesses. It's like this is not. Yeah, enough. but they're, they're Canadians. Now the problem, of course, is that then Perry's other argument is like also I can't print this. You know, by the way, we're just gonna keep going. Uh, you, <laughs> keep moving forward. You can't. You know, if I was, you can't print this. Like, what would people think if they knew there was an alien out there? If we weren't alone, kind of thing. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, so interesting ship, concept. Ship flew, but it's like also that's a kind of like the copyist of the answers are like, well, no, that's journalism. Is you're supposed to tell the truth and yeah. like reveal things to people. No, but that matter. happens later, right? That happens it's when she comes back and says journalism. this, and he goes, I think that. Remember, <laughs> she goes, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm gonna give yeah, it up. Yeah. After she gives it to the fucking uh, Drudge Report or whatever the fuck guy. Well, no, he says it there, too. Like, it can't, this, like, it's just a problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, though, while that whole thing's, it's a montage, uh, they left the ship. Even though you're going to freeze, it's 40 below or whatever, they, Superman just leaves her on a fucking ice bank or whatever. She's out. fine. The cops are, the, 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 They get there the real military, quick. I'm yeah. just saying a lot of things of how fast that happened. Okay. Cold is good for you when you're, you know, just Dying. lasered. It's a great point. She talks about all this stuff and what's going on and, you know, her article and how she wants to thank her mystery man and figure all this stuff out, right? Uh, at the same time, yeah, uh, Clark is taking the ship to even further into the Antarctic, you you know, his new fortress of solitude up there. Uh, Jor-El pops up, starts answering all the questions finally. You're kal I think it's... I didn't notice it on my first couple viewings, I guess, because I don't know where I was, but, like, last night when he gets kal and he's like, that's my name? Like, he has a really cool yeah. facial expression. I'm Not like, only that, but... That means something to me. Very similar to Connell Superboy in that annual where, of course, Superman gave Superboy's name. I digress. Of course. Um, there's a moment in this, and I, I could be wrong, but there, you're seeing sort of the narrative play out behind them, and in that cool, like, yeah. mon- like yeah. uh, kind of like Guardians style. of the Galaxy. Kind of like that. I think it's so cool, but there's a moment where they show the spaceship, and it has the sort of starburst mm-hmm. design that it had in the original Dick Donner. Oh, right? I didn't, I didn't catch that. Oh, I, I, I think the stars in the back. No, no, no. There's a moment where the spaceship's twirling, and they have these little like. Spikes come oh. out of it, yeah. and if I'm not mistaken, that's yeah, what yeah, the that's, original that's, one looked, it is like. How it looked yeah. like. Yeah, it burned I was up like, on re-entry. what a cool little homage yeah. to have that just one second of it's like, yeah, we get it. This isn't the first Superman you've ever seen. Yeah, that's cool. That's I love, I love the exposition, and like we needed all the stuff, and I do like seeing them together. I just feel like don't kill him if you're gonna have him come back throughout the entire movie. It's like all of the weird, like I'm a ghost, I'm just here, it's my conscious. It's like, what the fuck? Like it, it felt like. They were like, oh, we'll figure this out later in the script and we'll like figure out a reason to make this like make sense. It just simply doesn't. Like yeah. it's weird. And like there's scenes later where it's like when he's helping her through the ship and he's like just directing her and like I can close doors, yeah. like I can control this, like do this, do this, whatever. And then it's like there's scenes where you see two of him in the same thing. Yeah. I'm like, what are you trying to show us right now? Like this is just, just AI. I agree. I it's don't just so, wrong. It's I totally so agree. like I think this is this so could have been so much more powerful. Like it could have been bad. great. I know. Because he is awesome. He's such a good actor and like such a cool character. And it just felt like uh, it's also an element, again, another element that I don't think needed to be in this, because all it does is serve to back up, like, kind of the Jonathan Kent-ish philosophy. Not really, I guess. Maybe he's pushing him to be like, you have to be a good guy, you have to be a good guy. But there's a moment at the end of this where he goes, where he says something to the extent of, like, well, I, I sent you there, but it was your decision what you wanted to do with it. Terrible. Whether you wanted to be a god or, like, a fucking Me tyrant. Me and Lara have rebelled against this system. Right. You... Are, we are a child of natural birth. We're sending you out into the world to make it your own. We've also given you the codex, which is the whole thing we rebelled against of this whole genetically and engineering, right. whatever. The it's thing. up to if you. you uh, how, what do you want to do with it? You decide. What? What? Why the fuck? Why no. I need a clearer message. I've been a human here. for 33 <laughs> years. I don't want to fucking have all these alien pod yeah. babies around here. That's any sense. I'm banging a really hot waitress back in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, I, want, I really want to meet Chrissy. Come back yeah, to Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, I think that got was... some legal trouble with a log man though. <laughs> I, I just, I just think it's one too, one too many things to explore in this. Yeah, yeah with the, with the Jor-El, the cat, the, the Zod, it's just too much. But we get the great thing of you know this means hope and the way I, I love the way Jor-El pulls it and you see it like you know as Clark would traditionally open the comics or whatever. This means hope. He gets the suit. He puts on the suit. He walks out there. We get the a great line. I know you and I uh, both love of you know, like, the trailer. Where he's like, "You'll give the people an ideal to strive for. Yeah. They'll they'll race behind you. They'll stumble, they'll stumble. They'll fall. But in time, they'll join you in the sun. In time, yeah. you will help them accomplish wonders. Yeah, such exactly. a fucking yeah. and this amazing awesome thing scene to say. Of, yeah, Clark finally believing in himself and like, okay, I can really let Push loose limits, here yeah. and do this thing. Russell Crowe's so good. Jesus. He's amazing. <laughs> he's like, really good. The score in this movie, like we've went oh my an hour and thirty three minutes and haven't brought it up. It is. A fucking crime. phenomenal. And I love how powerful the low moments are, the high moments are. And they this movie's relentless. It uses the score more than I think any movie in history has ever used a theme 
And it's like every single scene has the theme play. Yeah. And I think it fucking works every single damn time. It backs up whatever's happening and it makes you give a shit, even if what's happening isn't perfect. Dude. You're just like, all right, this ties it together in a way where like you believe in a hope, even if it's like a, a really dark drab hope. Sure. Like you're like, oh my God, this there's something here. And like this whole scene of him like flying for the, the first build time. Build up is just so <sighs> So phenomenal. And maybe we see it in the Although trailer. Although it is better in the trailer. <laughs> well, like, the trailer with the music and the whole scene is like, that is a 10 out of 10 that, film. <laughs> that trailer, I saw, I remember when it came out, we were all working at IGN. And I remember what sitting there watching it. movie did it run it. before? Because I remember, I think I went and saw that. I did the Phantom Menace it. Where I wanted to see in the big theater. I went there and I think I watched the trailer. Was it not it. Dark Knight Ri- uh, Rises? It might no, have been I definitely Rises. wouldn't have done that. Because Rises was 2012. So that was a okay. year before Man of Steel. So. I, I will say it's I remember seeing it first time there. Um, it's interesting to see the different use of music in the two, right? Because this actually, for all intents and purposes, I don't want to say that, but uh, wasn't this this was executive produced by Nolan, right? Yeah, yeah. or Sing Beat, right? Not obviously tied to The Dark Knight, but but same composer, I want to say, is James Hans Horner, Hans, Hans, Hans Zimmer. Zimmer, and it's so interesting to see the difference in direction of like Christopher Nolan goes like we're gonna have this understated theme that is just grounded in reality and ke- and helps to back all that shit up. And this was like, Kevin, I could watch Kevin eat a fucking sandwich with this playing behind it's it. And it'd be the most exciting the thing sing. I've ever seen in my life. Can we Santa! please film it? <sighs> the fucking drums. You know, it's, it starts with just piano. Like just piano tones. And then it just eventually is just like, And it's sad that they didn't keep that thing. I don't think they reused it in Justice League, right? I think they had a whole other theme. Spoilers, you can't talk about it. Yeah, can't no, talk it's about unfortunate. Let's keep going. Also, Justice League, man. I definitely took a remember bullet to the brain on that one. <laughs> Let's just forget most of that. Uh, so anyways, he learns to be Superman. Congratulations, Superman. Uh, I think we left this out when Perry's like, I'm not going to uh, do this. She went and met with the blogger or she meets the blogger here. It doesn't matter. And she's she like, it to him, fucking post this. The world needs to know. Yada, 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 yada. Either way, we'll find out after our ads. I do have something though a fact for you here according to Zack Snyder the filmmakers outfitted Henry Cavill in the Superman 1978 costume to see how well he fit the role despite the outfit bearing a lighter blue color and red trunks no one laughed at him uh, Snyder knew then that Cavill was right for the role uh, Zack Snyder originally planned for the infamous red trunks that Superman has worn throughout his 75 year existence to be part of the suit however when looking over 1500 different designs he said it just didn't work. So fifteen hundred different designs. This is the one they end, they ended on, huh? This yeah. is the one that, like where it's pretty it's much not, just pitch black, bad. dark. It's Make too it dark, dark, man. Let's let's see. I mean, I feel the, like the suit wasn't dark. Wasn't dark. I, we have to they blur this. We'll get thrown off Twitch. Down. We'll get thrown off Twitch if I show you what the underwear look like on me right now. <laughs> Forgot the cup at home. Apparently, do you want me to? I'll put my hand up, my finger up, and we'll just. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, <laughs> that. no, I see what you did. I see what you did there. Um, and so then Lois, yeah, starts doing the thing where she's working backwards. And she, what does again, a man want to do? Showing what a great reporter she is, which I really dig. Again, that she's able to piece these little stories cool. together and figure it out and get all the way back to small. Because I remember being in the audience and you know watching this the first time and being a Superman fanatic, obviously. Journalism! <laughs> like yelling not at Not even that part of it. It's like, how far will she take this? And when she's in Smallville, I mean, I know it sounds stupid now because it, we've seen all these movies, but it literally was like, a, are they not going to do a dual identity is she, is are we in sure enough like right like she goes to jonathan she goes to martha then she goes to jonathan's gravesite and he shows up and it is like that thing of like holy fuck she knows that clark ken is the superhero I, I that's get- not how this ever goes right like even in post crisis which would become the basis that a long way around of where we are right now right it is that clark's there as a no glasses dude watching this plane space plane go wrong and jumps up and saves it and Lois stops him and he's just a dude in plain clothes and then he takes off and then shows up in the Superman suit eventually like yeah. to have it be from the jump that like no there's no she knows he's Clark she knows his whole thing it's like fuck I think it's cool but I think it introduces a lot of interesting problems oh 100% now. oh my uh, god that, don't like, even get me started on if, that. if she can do it how come other people can't do it if this guy would, if this guy fought a fucking war in Smallville you don't think everyone around the world would be like what's the importance of this small town no one's ever heard of before and again to get to go back Why to Smallville? being in that theater when in unearned moments right like Clark on the bike I need to have a job with my ear to the ground I need and him biking in and going in as a moment, Why? as a scene, it's like, wow, that's a really good scene. In the context of in this, this movie, movie, what the fuck? No, like, Although, no, dude, my it's favorite over. Thing, Nick, is oh, in yeah. the same way, in the same way that when uh, Gia watched Batman Begins for the first mm-hmm. time and when her, his parents were killed, she was shocked. When this movie ends, like, I need a job. I need to keep my ear to the ground. She's like, what's his job going to be? <laughs> it's like, oh my god, you just you just don't know. Wow. It's uh, <laughs> but it's but it's like it's it's just so weird because it just seems like yeah, it's a modern choice to have him not have a secret identity. That makes sense. Like there's no reason why he would yeah, have this. So commit to it. So and do commit the thing. to it. Yeah. But then he walks in 
to a room of probably the top journalists in the country, and no one recognizes him. Many of whom are eyewitnesses. Have seen him to standing him there, making out with Lois yeah. in the yeah, ashes. I've seen him there. Of Ground Zero, and yeah. it just—it just seems like wow, that is so off from this new progressive movie that we're trying to make, and then we're taking a giant step back. I, what a dumb I, idea. Same with him saving the kids. It's like the second he saved those kids, I'm like, you have eight people now that when this shit starts going yeah, down, goes, I know, know who that guy is. And yeah. that's yeah. The I'm thing. gonna sell my story. I need is money. That, I'm in fucking small. And I don't know how. IHOP. I don't know how you could have done it, but that would have been another really interesting take. That Lois comes to Smallville and starts rattling cages, and eventually they all pull her aside and like, no, we know. Like, no. Yeah. Like, this guy right. is the best among us. He saved me and these guys and that. and Like, we're not going to tell you shit. You need to leave. Like, that would have been a cool thing other than us. Been fucking rad. All these hanging questions of like, yeah, like, like it's, yes. As soon as all this happens, everybody's like, Yep, uh, Clark Kent, Superman. Yeah, like you know what I mean, and like, and then when he starts writing about himself in the Daily Planet, like, this is crossing some lines, Clark. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's just so terribly obvious because of of the time and place that this movie takes, uh, or you know, exists in, where there are high definition uh, oh, yeah. footage. Oh, you yeah, know? yeah. And, and then I started thinking, what would this movie look like if it were more of a period piece, like for Captain America: First Avenger was? If this movie took place in the 50s or something like that. Well, you can like go that. back. You can watch that. You can watch the 1970 <laughs> version of it. No, no. And this is yeah. what he did. In order to... I mean, granted, it's always been a thin... Like, sure. forget what you know, kind of like. He's, he was wearing glasses. But Reeves played it so Dude. perfectly yeah. because he was a bumbling idiot. He was a moron. He's so funny. He wasn't, a, he wasn't a moron, but he was just this meek little was, wuss. That there's, a, there's a great moment where they get held up by, by and he's like, oh shit! And he like he try he doesn't know what to do, and then he of course the guy panicked. he, he acts panic, the bullet, and then he catches right? the bullet, but without yeah. her knowing. But she do, uh, she just thinks so little of him that I mean, he just blends yeah. into the scenery the, in the I background. Mean, again, like the moment which has been shared recently on Twitter, I think, and he made a lot of thing is I'm Superman the movie. I well, I mean, like honestly, yeah. it's one. I mean, I'm burping my beer too, <laughs> but it is honestly like the if you ever if you just have a passing knowledge of superman the movie and you, or superman and you're like clark kent doesn't make any sense it's totally bullshit yada yada there is literally oh, a 15 second clip of clark kent showing to take lois out on a date and then doing the thing where he's like he's finally going to tell her and he, and he straightens, straightens up, up and, he's and like fucking gorgeous. i've never seen anything like it where it's like you he goes into two different characters and you're like hold and then he does the thing of like no 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 and he comes back do down it. and he he shrinks into the way of like Holy shit. I now, get why that could work. Contrast this. Everyone's seen her making out with this fucking gorgeous guy. And then that gorgeous guy walks back in with, with, the fuck, with his shirt tucked in and hot ass in his Levi jeans. And everyone's like, this guy's a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> fucking nerd. That is fucking nerd. Look at, look hey, I got two tickets. Two tickets to the front court court. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Two tickets to the what? Remember the guy? Court, court, the remember man. how uh, Stamper was like, That's "I got two tickets." Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. trying to bang every yeah, girl in the yeah, office, yeah. and then this gorgeous fucking man walks in, and nobody pays. He's him got any glasses. Money. He's a dork. Don't worry about it. His hair is not the same. No yeah. big deal. It's better. It's hotter. It's uh, hotter when he's, he's his hair looks better when he's Clark Kent. <laughs> We've already it's had the Jonathan Can thing. This is where we go into the next flashback we were talking about, right? Where yeah, the the much abridged and joked about already Jonathan Kent letting himself die. For now of course Clark, you, you feel for Clark here, right? He acts like a complete moron in the car says you're not my real father says a lot of hurtful things like an idiot would what's the one connection to the idiots we all know Andy that's right he's wearing a Kansas Jayhawk shirt of uh, course he's a moron of course he's an idiot, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> surprising they figure out how that shirt works they're all Flintstone driving the car because they can't figure out engines in Kansas anyways tornado <laughs> kills him he saved it for a dog totally stupid and I, again I think the way he t if we could only see this scene him telling Lois you'd be like oh man his father gave his life for a secret. To watch it, I'll play. It's like, dude, you're a full grown man in an ugly t shirt. Run over there and save your fucking dad. Run at super speed. Get because you know what I mean. Just get over there and do it. Who cares if all these people know? Like, exactly. You know? You're again. Th they fucking know. I Everyone, mean, dude. Even beyond knows. that, it's just like the yeah. moment where his dad's like, "Hey, take this kid and go." Just like, like no, 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 you take, you the, take kid. the kid and go. I'll, I'll save the dog because the tur that fucking we, tornado can't yeah. hurt. And it's that it's that thing where I think in this scene is specifically. It plays against putting Cavill there and being like, oh, you're younger. Because if it was a kid, even if it is a Superman kid, yeah. smart. You no, know, you take the kid, I'm going to go. Like, I know you can carry him, kind of thing. Like, that would make sense. But yeah, full grown, like, even now without superpowers, if my dad was like, I'm going to fuck back for this dog, I'm like, dad, 
you go. You're, you're almost 70 years old. I got this. I can, yeah. I'm a little bit faster. Or you just go like this, Dad. The dog's dog. 17 years old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how he would have wanted to go. Let's go. <laughs> Get back He's always wanted to see the fly. He's always wanted to see Smallville from the sky. <laughs> he loves, the, loves wind. the wind. Yeah. He loves sticking his head out the window. He's He's anyway, I, I got dies. a fact for you here, and this this is a weird one, but like, I thought it was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, the tornado scene stirred some controversy with the National Weather Service as overpasses are not considered to be safe shelters in the event of a tornado not due to the wind funneling effect, increasing the likelihood of being struck by debris. Yeah. In 1991, many thought overpass overpasses were safe after a highly publicized Twist. video I watched this. of I a TV this film crew nine, nine and, and uh, several other others taking shelter under overpass oh, wow. during a tornado Freaking near yeah. El Dorado. Uh, some shit happened, then eventually there was another thing where everybody died. <laughs> and oh my god! <laughs> so, so they were just well, like, some shit like, happened. Yada, 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 everybody died. Yeah. And so uh, then there was another tornado that was happening around the, the launch of this movie, and Zack Snyder considered like removing it. And then eventually Zack Snyder was talking to the National Weather Service and was just like, hey man, Superman will have to deal with all manners of disasters. <laughs> and they're just like, all right, well, we're going to be really like negative on this. He's like, all right, go. So, dude, what are you supposed to it. do? Not you're hide under fucking like kiss your Where ass. You, hide? you know what I mean? Drive a four by four and go into the weeds. <laughs> Get the fuck out of there. Let's see call. I don't know. Drive okay, away yeah, from yeah, it, just yeah. U-turn. This Get is why I don't there. live in Kansas. Pull a U. Exactly. Well, that's one of the many reasons. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I love How this good so is much. Twister, man? Great movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my Dorothy yeah. tells that to Lois. She's like, fuck, I get it. Lois goes back to Metropolis. T Perry's like, oh, well, I, this is good, too, with uh, uh, Ron, right? The sports guy. Uh, I'm, no, no, no. That's Ron Turpin. Um, oh, fuck. I'm, hold on. Nobody, every stop. I'm waiting. Yeah. Shit. No. You got it, bro. No, I should know this one. Turpin's I've the had detective, a couple right? Yes, exactly. You're wrong about Turpin. I know. I'm a, it's a sports guy. <laughs> Turpin's He's a always guy. such a douche. Fuck, I should know this. I lost all my decent Lightning Flash. Someone. Look it up for me. Oh, look it up. I don't even know yeah. what you're asking. I, yeah, the character he plays is, like a sports guy is, is an infamous DC yeah, thanks, Daily bro. Planet guy, and I'm forgetting his name uh, right now, and I will not progress. He played the, the, the Doug Stamper in... Uh, yes. Well, that no, no, that guy. Steve Lombard. Fuck, I should have known that. I'm sorry. Of course, the actor from Lombard course, Street. The, exactly. The actor from <laughs> Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, which I loved him. In. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, no, he's. I love his him in here when Lois comes in. He's like, oh, fucking Perry's going to tear you a new one. And he gets up to watch like yeah, this. It's, it's like, fun. that's great. And sure enough, she goes in there and Perry tears her a new one. And he's like, they want me to sue you, but I won't. You get two weeks, you know, unpaid leave. I like, and she's I like, like, fine. And, that, and he's like, Make it three. three you're weeks like, you're like, you, it, you can say all these things, but your cold, your lead's going cold. I know you're fucking bullshit. Yeah, yeah, this is I, not I how that. this goes. Right. And kudos to them for casting Lawrence Fishburne in this. He's mm. great. He's a great. Oh general. yeah, right. Yeah, just, totally. He's awesome. He's, he's awesome. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she's like, mm. God, I can't so, wait for John Wick in review. Now, it, every keep your keep your keep your head on the game here, right? Three weeks unpaid. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, Keep your head in the game. Ooh, I keep your head in the game. Yep. Uh, we go back to Smallville, Kansas. Superman now can fly. He can do whatever he wants, but still hitchhikes on a LexCorp truck to get dropped off at Martha's. All right, whatever. Maintain your humanity. He walks up. Martha's <laughs> excited to see him. They hug. They kiss. He drops some bags. He's smiling left and right. And he's like, Mom, I found, I, fi I know my people. I figured she out my goes, thing. She goes, oh. Which I you know again, it's like it's like when you explain to your nice. mom yeah. about a video game. Yeah. And she was like, "Oh, I have no idea what the fuck Ew. you're talking." I about. I remember trying to and tell I'm my mom about Grand, Grand Theft Auto. I totally read the scene as no. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a bad. I was just gonna tell my mom. Like, I, I was trying to explain Poorly to her shot, what sure. Grand Theft Auto was because she was watching The Sopranos at the time. I thought there would be some sort of emotional connection. It didn't she didn't fucking get it? But yeah. but it's she one of those scenes where it's like we. Jonathan's this incredibly complex character who does not know if his son's. He's scared of his son. He doesn't know what his son's gonna be. He wants his son to be good but he also doesn't know what I mean he's like it's your choice because I can't stop you with the way Martha is just this salt of the earth person who loves her son and just learned that her son her adopted son just found his birth mother and her her and she's just fine with it there's no sadness not, whatsoever I, I totally that's what she's putting you. up it's yeah. a front I, I but this should have been like a bitter a bigger I don't know I, I, she immediately drops the act he knows it's not right he's like what's going on she's like I'm afraid you know I'm afraid they'll take away from you it's very much the polar opposite of Jonathan and young Clark when Clark's like, well, I still be your son. You'll always be my son, right? In the same way here, you'll always be my mom without saying it that much on the head. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know I thought there was a lot of letters. Movies. He doesn't I like think the scene was that well-crafted. I thought it was kind of just like Rush and I thought, I thought it was well-crafted. And I thought that there was a lot of layers to it of like they not they said a lot without saying much where it's like her putting on this act, dropping it immediately. It's like it to me, I filled in the blanks of like not only is your greatest fear that the yep. – that, the government's going to come and take him away. Your real greatest fear is that he's going to learn the truth and not be your son anymore. Yeah, I agree, hundred uh, percent. I, I think that's what they were going for. It didn't come across that way to me. I thought it was flat. Let's we can move on. It's fine. Uh, and he's like, 
Mom, no one will ever come take me away from you. Next scene, we're at fucking NORAD. They're like, somebody's coming. Someone's coming. There's a spaceship out there. Like, oh, fuck. Somebody's going to find it with a telescope. We got to figure it out. They're not answering calls. I'm going to be the Martian Manhunter if everything went right, but it didn't go right. All right, cool. All this stuff's happening. All right, cool. And then they, they cut, cut away. Went right. and, we, and then we go back to the Daily Planet. And guess what? Immediately, like, oh, they found an amateur guy with a telescope found the fucking thing out there. They're floating around. Lois, why don't you know this? More importantly, Lois, why are you here? Three weeks off. Get the fuck out of the office. You're not getting paid for any of this. And it's also like, I you know, I, I know I'm stretching here. I know I'm jumping to conclusions. When we go back to Smallville, Clark's watching at night a college football game. College football traditionally Saturdays. Why is everyone working at the Daily Planet at Saturday night? And I know there's That's college football games once in a while cycle. not there. Also, was, was this how it was in 2013? I don't remember anymore. Was everything 4x3 still? Everyone's mm, watching on these little no. fucking little TVs ever. No. I, well, well, it's Kansas. It's Kansas. Yeah, thank you. It, that's true. I that, had actually, you <laughs> all nailed it. No, I should yeah. be impressed they have anything already. I grew up in Ohio, and we had 90s technology until like 2006. Yeah, sure, that's fair. sure. In, in Ohio, about 15 generations ahead of Kansas. You know what <laughs> Riverside, what I mean? they're still playing with fucking sticks and stones. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Anyways, Lois, come on. Jenny says this. Jenny could have been a really cool character. Was it going to be Jenny Olsen? No, it wasn't going to be. Jimmy's going to show up and get shot in the fucking face. Show them over here. I don't care about future spoilers. spoilers. I don't care about future spoilers, everybody. It's time to go off. WB released the Snyder Cut. Uh, come over here. They get on the screens. The spaceships are happening. Oh, my God. What the fuck? We go. Then they start broadcasting here, right? Or we go back to small when they start broadcasting. The broadcast starts. You are not alone. It's it's Zod's I voice. I love this. We start cutting around the world. It's being translated to every language. You are not alone. You are not alone. I thought that was corny as fuck. I thought it was corny as fuck. I love this because I think <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where you're like, he is. This is a terror tactic. He just wanted He's to fucking yeah. terrify everyone. And he was like, "You got. You have to imagine they started filming. And he was like, eh, it looks too clean. Can we do something to like? Can we add like a cool effect on yeah. it? I'm really it's happy they got a multilingual motion graphics editor. They're just like, let's just go. Let's just do it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's doing it. I, but that, that is the weird. It's the weirdest thing because you're like, why? We're there, Kansas. Why? Right, backwards. Oh, <laughs> covered in mud. <laughs> covered exactly. in semen from just <laughs> random people. We're there, Kansas. Jesus. <laughs> uh, it, it is an interesting choice because you're like the visual of it is terrifying with you not being able to make out his face, but then it translates perfectly with like text that's totally legible. You're like, why don't you just what the fuck? Come on the screen. Yeah, you it, don't have that kind of. Well, technology. he's trying to terrorize people and it works. He's I got think the so. fucking yeah, I, 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 I really liked when he I like the effects and like but the weird, weird effect state like yeah. followed like, like the artifacting that, sort of thing. I, I love that effect. The, I, I I agree with Tim though. I think it was super corny and it reminded me of like. I just don't see how he would know that this would terrify human beings from a different planet. Like, I, where does he have Terror's this hair, man. Reset? This feels like yeah, 90s no, superhero shit. Yeah, yeah. And it's like in a movie well. that's like grounded so far. It's just I, like, what the fuck? I like this part. And I, I, think, I think the reason why it worked for me was Michael Shannon. His voice, mm -hmm. his performance is what so I, ominous. What I really like is me. how it's shot in Smallville. When they're outside and it starts and then they like open the door and it's like, while like, being mixed in with it and then like the door it's almost like a horror movie as he approaches and figures it out I liked yeah. when it cut over and it like took over the girl's phone yeah yeah and she's like, like it's, it's, every, it's, it's on the, the RSS that, she's it's like, like pointing at just a random point of the, the screen it's on the RSS feed. Like, you're everyone looks over as a wall like Jenny what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways yeah then it ends the light bulb pops Martha drops all her tomatoes which looked delicious what a great it harvest did. you know what I mean organic oh. <laughs> what a great wow. harvest wow. <laughs> Uh, so then it's the next day and we're getting all the news reports of just like man this guy should turn himself over like you know good of the good of all of us get it get these fucking alien spacemen out of here or whatever blah 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 and uh, Lois is getting ready to it and the guy from the blog is like listen I don't even think we need to worry too much Lois Lane knows this guy like I put out this article right y'all remember that you don't read my blog and Lois like oh, she's talking to Perry she's like oh fuck and she looks out the window and there's FBI guys she's like oh fuck and she runs out and she goes to the back door and they don't see her and then she runs and then guess what there he is Guardian Chris Maloney ready to fucking get you gotcha hell yeah a good death it's a good day to die oh my god don't spoil it so good a good death is his own reward <laughs> um so that happens. Lois is taken into custody or whatever. Oh, fuck, that's bad. Uh, back in Kansas, Superman, again, is just like, man, I got a lot to think about. I mean, I wish anyone on this planet knew anything about this Zod fellow, <laughs> but I won't talk to the AI that has all of my dad's memories and much information on Zod. Instead, Instead, let's make sure, let's make sure you know that this character is Christ. Right. Let's make sure we start <laughs> infusing for no reason at this point oh, religious Jesus. religious undertones into this movie by having him go to a fucking priest and then when he leaves the ship later having him leave like he's on the cross. Why do they do this? Stop doing that. 
at no point have we have we have we touched on like the religious implications of this. Mm-hmm. And for the so whatever reason he goes to a fucking Catholic church. Ah, that was fucking weird as shit. And then he goes to the Catholic church and has a flashback in the church of his dad, who is the actual. The like, one theme. thing I would throw out there is that. And, and I'm not trying to be a dick about it because this scene makes no sense. I would not have done this. I wouldn't. But it's, it's a great visual to For Tomorrow, if you ever read, which was a comic book done. It was a run there where Superman went and talked to a priest over and over again with this whole fucking weird backstory that happened of like splitting Clark and putting him in a different dimension. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But it was a cool like visual of like, oh, that's neat. I remember seeing that. Him and it was like, it's dumb. Yeah. Um, that was fine. The, it, it is a nonsense thing. This is the flashback to crumpling the fence. You could kill anybody, but yeah. they, they don't really drive it home. Comes back out. Can you trust your gut? Can you trust him? I don't know. My gut says I can't trust Zod. I can't talk to the AI for some reason. And then he starts to leave, and he's like, it's a leap of faith. Sometimes you got to take the leap. He's like, I don't know if I can trust Zod, but I don't know if I can trust humanity either. And, and the priest is like, it's a leap of faith. Like, I, you have to make the first move. I understand why that happened, but we already have so many fucking characters I in this you. that are supposed to be his moral compass. That why do we need a Catholic priest to tell him it's a lethal fit? Fa- why couldn't it have been his mother when he was talking to her earlier being like this? Trust your instincts. You're a good person. I raised a good man. I know I'm not your natural mother, but I've been your mother for 30 fucking years, and I trust you, and I love you, and I see the good in you, and these people will see the good in you. Trust yourself. Why you go to a character? We never see that character again. <laughs> I know. A stupid idea. I know. I know. I'm that with could you. have been. That could have been a flashback there. That could have been Jorel. That could have been Jonathan Kent. It could have been any of these people. And it was Jonathan it would Kent, have stre- by the way. It would have strengthened the relationship with any of those people. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. Totally get you. And by the way, what was the, in the flashback, what happens? He talks to his dad, right? And that right. is what backs that up. You, you're going to be the man you, you're going to yeah. be. You're going to be good or bad. Yeah, you're going to yeah, be good yeah, or bad. Yeah. It's your choice. Yeah. Cool. By the way, leap of faith. Is it my choice or is it a leap of faith? What's happening? I like leap of faith. Because I think I think it's the thing. It's just, it's just too many ideas to play with. I agree. Time. I'm not arguing. That's what we we'll see with the scene with the Anyways, scene. Anyways, though, he takes the, he decides I will take the leap of faith, and this is where we get the yeah, the reveal to the military, which is a super weak reveal of Superman. So dumb. But it is cool. All the guns like every like aiming up there at him. You know what I mean? And I do just like there. that. God. And landing, and he's like, the yeah. Again, physics are so good. Let me back up. I, I like the, I like this scene. I just this wish is, that his reveals of the world would have been a grandiose. Welcome affair. to Man of Steel. Yeah. <laughs> I like this scene. But everything like surrounding this, it and the motivations and yeah, why. The concept of him turning himself into the authorities. The, 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 <laughs> Two hours. Dude, Guys, don't you, are you having fun? I'm having Dude, fun. Then he goes down to the thing. They like put handcuffs on him. Yeah, he goes down there. Yeah. I want to talk to Lois Lane. Why do you think we have Lois Lane? I know you fucking have Lois Lane. Don't play games with me. All right, cool. Here's some handcuffs. They walk him in there. You get that cool shot, one of the first ones that was revealed, of him getting walked by the military dudes. He gets put in an interrogation room that just smacks of Nolan's interrogation of Batman and uh, Joker, right? But it's that great thing of him sitting there talking to Lois, right? You got up to the thing of like, what? It stands for hope. The, the S, right? Well, on this planet, it's an S. What about Maybe Super? We'll it, yeah. Which I remember watching in the trailer when they did I'm like, oh, they went to that in the movie. And then they did it in the movie. And I was like, oof, that's a choice. Okay. I, I didn't hate it. Like, I, I, I don't hate I had it. the same feeling in the trailer. I was like, there's no way that makes the final cut. And I think in the final cut, it, it actually contextually worked. Yeah. Like, I agree with you, Nick, about 90% of Superman's lines in this movie. I'm like, what the, f-? like, what movie are you even in? Yeah. The interrogation scene, <laughs> it worked for me. See, oh, I love see, when he turns it and he's weirdly like, did Dr. Hamilton. That didn't work for me. Winter because Green the whole savers. point of you coming was to say, I'm going to come with these guys like hat in hand and I'm going to, I'm going to have humility and I'm going to prove to these people that I'm not a bad guy. And I'm going to do that by immediately standing up, breaking the cuffs you said, and proving to you that I know every single thing about you and I'm in control of the situation. It's the most intimidating fucking thing you could have possibly done. I'd have been like this. This guy's not a good guy. We got to fucking nuke him. This guy's terrifying. If you said to me, you can see through my fucking clothes and cuffs don't work on you, let's call Space Bay here, man. Let's leave all our cards on the table. I'm I'm gonna fucking murder you if I want. I'm gonna do whatever I want. Yeah, but you're I feel no like control yeah. of him whatsoever. going in and, and like doing that. It's yeah. like I feel like him saying like I you could be. That's dead. a power move, man. I'll it let is. you keep me captive. Why? Well, well, fuck well, you. But I think it's the thing. Uh, I let you do this like, to me. Yeah. I let you do this for you and we feel more comfortable. And now I'm letting you don't know. It would have been a much bigger problem. This would have what now? Granted, the end he crashes one of their drones and almost kills the guys. He knew he wanted to kill him. He knew he wanted to kill him. I mean, the the initial the initial power move was him flying down and the the general whatever being like. Okay, we get it. Like, but he has a line where he goes, she goes, what's with the cuff? And he goes, oh, it makes them feel better. And then in the ne- three seconds later, he goes, fuck this. And it's like, what, what, who are they? Who is this guy? Are you, are you the Boy Scout? Are you an asshole? What's going on? No, he never comes off as the asshole. No, to me, this came, this was like, 
this is just a really weird at odds moment where he's like, I'm going to prove you all these. Fo- also, I, don't let people know you have all these powers. You're just giving way too much information about yourself. I do think it would have been stronger if he had asked them to let him out of the cuffs instead of him breaking them. Or stayed them. in the that, cuffs. That, that, or like, if Lois would have been like, by the way, he can, you, he can totally break those cuffs. And they realized that they needed to have her explain that he is this incredibly more, powerful yeah. character. But he's choosing to sit here and take the punishment that you give him because he wants you guys to know he's on your fucking side. What he does instead is he gets up and he becomes the most scary fucking person I've ever met in my I, life. I was in one second. I, 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 I had seen this scene before, but it was one of those things where like, oh shit, is he about to walk through the wall and get into the other room with them? Just, well, that yeah. wouldn't have like surprised me at all. And it's I, I do think But he like, didn't do that. It's like that's why yeah. he's like by not crossing his the point line, is showing that yes, I have all these powers and I'm not being overly I'm not talking to you meanly, or I'm not talking to you in a very but, threatening way. But I'm I'm showing you. Yes, I could do all this stuff. But hey, same I'm team. on your same side. Same team. Yeah, I, and I, I'm being I, and I'm being sort of this uh, this relatable person who's lived on this planet for 33 years. I'm with you guys. I just feel like like they're they're like Nick's right in the sense that like yeah like like breaking the cuffs and being like you know this shit that you guys put on it that's a show that I'm doing for you is a power move in like not a cool way. It, it's the introduction it's like, of the, you have a half pack of, of, of eaten wintergreen mints in your pocket that's like, all right, this guy's fucking domina- dominating us yeah. right now. He is, we are no match for this guy whatsoever. And I get that's what they were going for. To me, it just was like, oh, it's it's that same thing that I, that I keep coming back to critique where I'm like, everything's just a little off in this. Like, that's not the way to be an endearing person. Having someone that you trust explain this to them and, and like, I don't know, like, Let's move on because we haven't even gotten to fucking Smallville yet. I can move pretty Smallville quick, yet. but we just keep getting caught up on little things because yeah. the movie so much to talk about. You know, <laughs> right, Zack so Snyder. I think it means. <laughs> right. yes, that's, that's what he'll be. That's what he'll be known for. <laughs> Him and Scorsese. <laughs> Anyways, they come to the agreement. Okay, we'll turn you over to Zod. Zod's, we've already contacted Zod. Zod's coming. They go out there. He says goodbye to Lois. Lois runs back. Ship comes down. Fe- Feora gets out. She's just, she's a jerk. You know what I mean? You can tell from the just everything about her. I love jerk. her. I yeah. love her. I love her. No, she's a great villain. I think Don't she's wrong. fucking awesome at this. She walks over, and she's like, cool, we want Lois, too. And that wasn't when Maloney, the Guardian, steps up. That's not part of the deal. Uh, and Lois like, no, go, don't worry about it. She walks over there. They give her the yoker. You're going to need this thing. When, anything in the ship. You know, no, but I lo- Our I love, atmosphere won't be good for you. I love this one character moment for Maloney where he's like, that's not what, we, that's not what the deal was. Yeah, yeah. She goes, well, do you want do you me want to want tell Jen? John, 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 and he goes, I don't give a shit what you tell him. Yeah. And you're like, oh. oh. <laughs> if I'm the general, I'm like, yo, dude. Chris Maloney, man. <laughs> this motherfucker just landed in a spaceship. It looks like a giant black beetle. That's why you love Chris Maloney for a million years. He's a bad motherfucker. Uh, they get on there. Yeah, here's this thing for the atmosphere. Lois, you won't be able to breathe here. Great, whatever. They walk upstairs. Uh, all the other Kryptonians are there. Zod's goons. Uh, hey, welcome. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. All right, cool. And kal starts ch- choking. He's like, I feel strange. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's the atmosphere. The atmosphere doesn't work here. Because remember, this was... Uh, they deviated from what we traditionally talk about with Superman, right? Krypton, red sun, Earth, yellow sun. That's the problem. Jor-El was very clear, right, when he laid it out way back in the day of they have a younger star. He's going to drink in the radiation that way. And the differences in atmosphere would have something to do with all this shit. Yeah, so the difference in the planetary density. So and here's the where the question marks start rising about how any of this plays out. But let's just have fun let's and watch a not, movie. Yeah, let's like let's how does that translate that. to him just being on their shit? Huh? How does that translate to him just being on their shit? Oh, because apparently... Their atmosphere is Kryptonian atmosphere. On the ship, yeah. Exactly. And so then when they come to our planet, they need their atmosphere and the headgear they wear, which would make them as powerful as a regular Kryptonian, which is basically an Earthling as... uh, 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 Until they go to Earth. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, you don't know. They go to Earth, though. I buy it. And they can fight as strong as Superman, who's had 33 years of the radiation. And then it's when they violate the headset... That then they get all their powers, That's but then it overwhelms dumb. them, but then and they wouldn't want to put that through the babies, even though it takes them about Look, five man, minutes to figure J.K. it out. J.K. Rowling was creating magical spells left and right for both. Forget everything you know, man. You know, good point. Good forget point. everything you know. Logic's a little broke here. Anyways, Clark falls down. His body's rejecting the atmosphere. They put him on the table. Then we get the we're in his brain. Here's some skulls. Guess right. what? I'm Zod, and I know I'm starting from scratch with you. I could totally lay myself out not to be a bad guy. I am a bad guy. Here's my plan to be a bad guy. I'm gonna kill everybody on Earth. Make it new Krypton. Zod sucks, dude. Actor dope. Zod sucks. Yeah, oh yeah. The motivation yeah, of him. Totally. 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 He's a ba- I'm a bad guy. I, I I'm like guy. I like bad the guy, whole bad like guy, bad guy. I was made to make sure that Krypton Safe continues. Card, Krypton, yeah. Like I like that, but like sure. Know, yeah, they it, committed it, to it. Yeah. Hey, he's a leader. He's a bad leader. Yeah. Yeah. Have you read any of Bendis's books lately? No. 
him and Zod and Superman not obviously friends, but living in peace in different planets. I was like, well, that's, that's actually, what, again, we're talking about very cool. What if Zod had, like, Sean Hunter's hair from Boy Meets World? I'd be into that. Yeah. Boy I'd believe Boy a bit Meets more. Or uh, Brink. Andy Brink. Brink. Okay, I, just I, on my, I just went on my personal record that I've been keeping it going. You're great. Okay, yeah, cool. You're doing great. a good job. We're proud of you. You're fantastic. Oh, <laughs> thank you, guys. I'm having a great show. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, no. And he goes into the skulls and he wakes up and he's like, all right, cool. This conversation's fucking done. He's like, oh, no. And then he pulls up the thing. He's like, you're a fucking baby. <laughs> you can't get out of here, baby boy. And they all start tickling him. <laughs> He's like, stop, stop. <laughs> Last night, Jen tickled so me with her head. I'll tell you another story another time. Right. Um, so, yeah, you're this, that, and the other. All right, cool. And then, yeah, they're like, okay, Lois, you go into this fucking thing, right? Or she tells him at this point, like, oh, no, that's later. She's in this thing. But he, he, he had already given her the key. Yeah, when right, they're coming right. up in the air, so she puts the key in immediately. Jor-El's there, and he's like, "Hey, man, I'm I'm his dad. Let's get you the fuck out of here. I got control of the ship. I'm resetting the atmosphere right now. I it's gonna control, make him super strong. I make them normal still of the ship. He's an AI." What's I could do, do whatever I could do with What's the he ship. What's he gonna do with the ship? Is he just gonna close a bunch of doors, or is he gonna do something like get it out, or move it, or explode it? Do do some shit with it's it. It's a it's a it's the thing that is gonna be slaves of the world engine. Explode the ship. Blow it up. Do something with it. Wait, by, the way, the wor- by the way, the words Suck world engine, real cool. Yeah. 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 Also, yeah. the effect of the world engine is one of the coolest things that I've ever seen awesome. in my life. And the sound the sound <laughs> design of this movie, in addition to the score, <laughs> so fucking good. I got and s- that, the gravity... Dude, there, there's the, a moment the gravity, where oh, go ahead. fucking Jenny's stuck and we're supposed to care about her even though we've only seen her twice and Perry White's like, I'm gonna stay with you. And you're like, what the fuck, run. And there's a moment where the Sorry. gravity's pushing and it rolls over a car yeah. and it goes, and it just flattens yeah, the car. So I'm like, awesome. what a fucking cool the, effect. The, the, the effects, the sort of weird zoom in movement, the color grading, I got so so many World uh, of world, World vibes. Yeah. Well, uh, that's, what yeah, they, they yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what they wanted. They wanted this to play as a sci-fi film, yeah. not a superhero film. I mean, and the ship also looks like... The yeah, world. it does look yeah. like Yeah, it does. it yeah. does. Anyway, back on the ship, like I was saying, all the shabby doors are opening. Kyle gets up. He's like, fuck you, guy. You already got my blood, but I don't care. I'm Superman. And he's like, oh, and they all run away. <laughs> and so, like, that's happening. Uh, Lois is running around. Uh, Zod isn't on the ship anymore, right? Or is he? I don't know. It doesn't matter for this no, point. No, Zod is still on the ship, right? Is, I think still on the ship. It doesn't matter, though. So the doors are getting closed, whatever. You know where this is going. Uh, Lois gets in the pod. Put your head left. It gets punctured. She gets thrown out. It's f- spiraling and dying or whatever. Uh, jor and Superman get their final moment. Hit that panel. Pow, knocks out into space. And then he's like, look. He's like, Lois. He doesn't see the world. Lois. Important for his, you know, frame of mind. Um, he's like, you can be a great, you know, lead him, all that shit, all the same stuff, you know, whatever. He's like, yeah, cool. Yeah. And then it's exactly what you're talking about. The I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. Very, very I'm clear. Jesus. I'm like, I, that's counterintuitive to what we're talking about. You're not a god. Slowly you don't rotates. want to be a god. We want you to be part of it. Okay, well, Shoots over, gets Lois. Oh, that was the thing, right? Zod and his cronies left to go get the ship. Oh, the that ship, was it. right. They went down They realized the, the codex right. wasn't with him. It was in the ship because he got they got it out of his head or whatever. Right? Oh, yeah. Except they took his blood and apparently that, t- that test. They don't know yet. They don't know yet. They don't right. know yet at that point. They shoot down to Smallville then. Or, well, Superman saves Lois, takes her to Smallville. Meanwhile, the Kent Farm. That scene sucks. I man. hate this fucking scene. I hate oh, that. Yeah, this the extreme close ups and her what the Amy fuck? Adams is getting spun around and CG. Ah! Oh, it's like you were saying earlier that you never worry about her. It's like, in this scene, not only do you not worry about her, you're just like. I'd rather you die at this point. Yeah. Like this is just annoying. As fuck. This needed to be a this needed to be a moment that had a, a build up of tension, where when he saved her, he pulled her out and they floated in the sky for a moment. You know, like it needed to be. Give him something. It's just fucking. I let do, us have a moment with these I agree, characters. I agree. I agree with everything he's saying. I do like the smash the glass, push the thing away, catch her. That was the one thing that I, I that's thought was fine, neat. but then it goes. Oh, okay, then we're on the ground. No, like, I know I'm not. Let, I'm not defending it. The editor was like, "Dude, let these fucking scenes breathe a little bit. But like, build up to it. Show a couple shots of her. Show a couple shots of him. Okay, he's almost there. He's not. No, shit just not it's to like mention, such can a, a fucking can I get science with Kev? Science, science, science with Kev. I'm oh. Kevin. I haven't been listening for the last like five minutes. <laughs> Kevin, I, no, no, I'm going back even further. So you might even be okay, there. Okay, good. I don't understand re-entry. If I re-entered the Earth's atmosphere slowly, would there still be the fire and shit around slowly? me? Slowly? No. Yeah, okay. If you're going real slow, yeah, you're fine. How slow is real slow? Well, at what point do you think I have to worry about I fire? I mean, speed. Like, at the speed she's coming in, I mean, there's the holes in her coming, craft. There, yeah, there she's going to be worried about fire. Oh, okay. She's going to be worried about fire. She's going coming in fast. She's burning inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> She's cooking. This, yeah. this all felt like an escalation that just didn't need to happen of her in the pod. Welcome to Smallville. Small it. Small it, it, it just, it, to there. me, I was just like, we just got, saw a scene of kind of humanizing or at least like lowering the power levels of Superman and Zod and like explaining this whole like, you need the mask, you don't need the mask, like all this mm-hmm. stuff. Cool. Let's set up a fight between them. Why are we then about to put the human in this pod to fly towards the earth and then he's gonna punch the thing so like to grab her. I'm like, 
she would get so fucked up. Like yeah, we went skydiving. How difficult was it to breathe? Not easy. It's not easy. Wait, you've been it, skydiving? Yeah. yeah. Like in real life. Yeah, Remember, he wore ch- he wore chubbies. It was a not problem. just like in a room. A huge problem. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, we no. both went. Have you gone in a room? No, I wanted I want to. Do yeah. That, yeah. But no, it's just like it just felt like movie bullshit. Where I'm like, this movie doesn't need this type of bullshit. Yeah. We're about to get 45 minutes of Dragon oh, Ball Z fight. Yeah. Let's have that. We don't need a human falling to fucking Earth. That's what you got, though. He saved her. They do the little twirl spin landing, which again, I wish it was a different scene. But again, for this one moment, I'm like, that's cool. I like the way they come down together and talk. I like enjoy, enjoy the moment they share. But then, and I definitely enjoy him being like, mom. Shoots over there, as we already said. The truck was thrown through. They found the spaceship. It wasn't what they needed. The codex wasn't in there. Zod's pissed. And while he's then reinterrogating Martha after throwing her on the ground, remember that name. It's going to be important. No spoilers. Uh, <laughs> I can't Superman. wait. I'm really excited for this. Superman tease. comes racing across, hit, grabs him, and starts punching him in the face. Never threaten my mother. Again, very important plot point. Remember mm-hmm. this, everybody. He mm-hmm. doesn't like people threatening his mom. Really, yeah. weirdly, really gets 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 intense about his mom there. No, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, right? totally yeah, right. Uh, but be, so let his dad die. Just let, let people know. His Oedipus dad complex, chose to die. Let him die. The shit Martha out of didn't want to be there. Small, then they brawl into. Uh, I Smallville. Smallville. Uh, yeah, they, they, the main street of Smallville. Fuck. We're barely. Hold on. That's right. What? We see the LexCorp truck? Facts. Yeah. Shot in Plainville, Illinois, everybody. No big deal. My mom oh. sent me photos from there. I wow. digress. Right? It's like I've been there. Wow. They wow. saved it all because nothing's That's happening in Plainville. The exact same scene from Thor 1, the exact same scene from Power Rangers and 2017 or whatever it was. Isn't this the scene where we see the Wayne... Uh, no, logo. that's in Metropolis. Satellite, that's later. That's in Metropolis. Uh, God, that, this um, is, that's you, a this different is, fight. That's a different fight. The, dude, I mean, if everybody will stop me, you can go real quick here. But I know you all love your action. Oh, and then he threw a right hook and a I, left hook. I do. I oh, do, and then a train hit him. Oh, my God. God. Everybody, the train the hit him. Everybody at home, great. all y'all sleeping there through the giant plot moments of his mom being named Martha. But a fucking, <laughs> oh, they're fucking doing knives. You start jacking it. I know. The, the cape is like just slightly, slightly off center. And it has been the entire time. So I yeah. I am me. not wearing this costume well if you're an audio listener. I'll let you know. Uh, I, I do want to give a shout out to the fact that they integrated him flying in this way, like so cool. Like when he fights, he floats. There are moments where he like they're throwing punches at him, he like floats over instead of rolls over. I'm like, that is so fucking and like later in the movie where the floor drops out from underneath him yeah. and he just goes, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I just yeah. thought that was a really, really smart, like, hey, let's think about how this is a guy that can fly. Let's think about how we integrate that into this organically. Like if you were able to fly, it would be second nature to you, so you would just do it, you know? You would, I thought it was cool. I said this I, earlier and, and when we first started this, like when we first saw Man of Steel, I was just like, Oh, it's a punch harder, just fucking punch harder. And like we gave a lot of shit to that and we gave a lot of shit. It's Dragon Ball, whatever. Looking back, we haven't seen this again. Like we haven't seen this done well. And I think, in context of superhero movies, this was done really well. No nah, bullshit. Like this is one of my least favorite things about this movie. The fighting. There is no consequences. These yep. people are just constantly hitting each other. Like you're talking about Dragon Ball Z. Those characters get beaten up. They have broken arms, and like they have to then deal with the. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, move on. let's move on. No, you Wait, know what, what are you pointing at? I was nodding just, in agreement. No, I know. I just love but it. I what, love Greg and his Superman. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, yeah, they get bruises. They get bruises. It's no, true. No, what for I'm me, it's like there's consequences for the fight. And in this, there's nothing. Like these people aren't hurt. They look perfectly yep. the mm-hmm. same until the dude gets his neck snapped. And it's like, oh, I guess necks are vulnerable to being breaking. And again, but like not cheeks. This is exactly what we're talking about in terms of this movie being great scenes and moments and things, but then not adding up as a whole. Mm. We don't we don't want to make the traditional superhero movie, right? Then cool. If me and Tim, as human beings, brawled the way these guys brawled, there'd yeah. be bruises, there'd be cuts, there'd be blood, right? Throw out the fact this atmosphere stuff in the suits don't make any sense. If two Kryptonians brawl, there should be that as well. So when they are doing this whole thing, and when Clark pushes the train out of the way and comes out, at least have something going on Nothing. that shows you disheveled. Not even his clothes is so, fucked up. That's my thing is like, this is, even as much as I love, you know, DC and Superman stuff, for me, such a trademark, like I gloss, I gloss over of just like, they're just hitting each other. What does it See, matter? But my like, thing with you, that, you're that, saying that like, there, we've seen a Thanos fight scene with the Hulk where Thanos beats the shit out of him. Like that's so much better in, in, in my opinion of like, what a cool... Sure. I think it's cool that they're not, they are on the equal level and they're both not getting cut and bruised and all that stuff. And it's just like, you do see the choreography. That's the thing I like about it. It's the choreography, him flying, him floating, it not being a traditional, like, sure. I'm on the ground rolling. I am flying. I have this capability. Them going at each other. Superman's on the defense. 
it's uh, Zod that's thrown him through the buildings and all this shit. And it's more that Superman's trying to stop him from doing that. It's not hurting He's him. He's not. Superman's not stopping. Superman punches him back and shoots him through shit just as much as like he's I, shooting. I don't think well, he did, man. I think more importantly, the, the, the issue that, that Kevin's raising, which I think is important, is that they they just seem like they're invulnerable. And mm-hmm. that's a big problem for a character that you're supposed to care about. Because if we don't believe that he's really ever able to be killed, then there's no tension whatsoever. It's in not any even of the action killed, scenes it's whatsoever. impeded. It's when the helicopter shows up and there's that thing, fire on the targets. What about the guy in blue? Fire on everybody. And they do it. And it's just like, it's not gonna do this it is a mild inconvenience at best. Yeah. This is I an know, annoying. But, but see, that to me is a perfect example of rewatching this. Of like, that was my t- critique the first time. Rewatching it now, I'm just like, that the the thing that now he needs to deal with is getting them saved, getting the humans out. Yeah, of the Yeah, but they way. don't do that well either, and that's my critique of when he's supposed to save Lois. It's so glossed over. Those also, that's why those have to be big moments. Is this, if you if you have a character that can't be beat, then everyone around him needs to be really, really, really important. You have to really fucking care about whether these people live or die. It's and the we argument. Don't, but it's I the care about also, no, it, Hell yeah, you but do. That's the thing that was is a that test no, no, <laughs> The argument becomes right is that you need that fucking Zod or some moment for Superman too of like. He cares about these humans, yeah, yeah. right? There isn't that moment of like we are at a standstill. First off, you're an untrained fighter and somehow able to hang with us that are genetically engineered to be fighters. It doesn't matter. So you're, fighting cool. <laughs> you're fighting us. You're fighting us, and nobody's winning. But I, I see. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I thought even watching this one, I, I thought maybe I'd forgotten or missed something. But what we talked about earlier, right, where he grabs the dude falling out of the chopper, and like, are, yeah. you, are you okay? But he like, only saves that one person. Yeah, there was know, two of the chopper, and it yeah, crashes. Yeah, yeah. No, totally, totally. Yeah. But I'm saying like, even if that would have happened, and then when the chopper started yeah. going in, I was like, is he gonna save it? Oh, he doesn't. Yeah. Even to have Feora be like, wait a second. And she does like, even again, even before any of that happens, there's the fight in the IHOP where she's like, "Your morality is what's like, you know." Like, how do you know that? Revol- right? Like, how what did you, you know see that about me? me do anything? We met five I'm minutes. I'm covered ago. in maple syrup, and I said hi to Pete. Like that isn't morality yet. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I do think it was visually interesting. I'll just say hundred percent. Oh, dude, <laughs> well, and I'm not taking away from that. Again, all see, the things like, when Feora does the thing where she fights all the army dudes, and she's yeah. like, pop, pop, pop. That, I was like, awesome. that was cool. That because was like a fucking video game. That's fucked great. Up, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. there's consequences yeah. to somebody getting punched. Like, the only consequences we get from these fight scenes is that the city around them is gonna be is being destroyed, and it's just like, yeah. I, to it me, it's like, noise. that's not exciting. A lot of property damage, yeah. I mean, fucking millions Tons. of people dying. <laughs> and I love that, though. Yeah. We, uh, we haven't seen that superhero movie before Thousands. or yep. since. Yep, and, and, and to my point, when this movie got took it on <laughs> the chin. That's not true, Tim. In, in Age of Ultron, Big Kobe chunks is fine. Of, got out. So, no, that's not true. Everybody lives. It created Civil Wars villain. Come on, Tim. Think. No, I get that, but that, that's <laughs> such Tim. small scale, man. <laughs> no, I mean, like, here's the, here's no, the thing. Like, My, no, in a, in a real true. sense, actually, like... See, that was a good way to yeah, deal with that. Though. Absolutely a make good it, way to deal with yeah, it. In this, moment. it's just like the next movie. Well, all right, future spoilers. Yeah. We can't talk about it, but like. No, you can't. There's no real consequences to the. Like, well, there, there, there is. There is. There is. Yeah. There let's is. stop, yeah. though. Let's, let's go, go back. To, no, no, let's go right. back let's right, right to Man of Steel 2013, watching it, and, and me being the Superman guy for all intents and purposes, right? Leaving that theater, and then people having this argument of like, oh, but the destruction, and oh, he didn't save everybody. And I, and I, and I remember being like, listen, again, this isn't the movie I would make, but. Invincible is the first comic I ever read where that acknowledged stop stop when Mike's when Mark's fighting somebody who's a giant spoiler for the first major arc we're we're killing all these people and he's fucked up right and the city's yeah. destroyed and it was like oh my god when I read Death and Return of Superman and Superman and Doomsday were brawling through buildings in Metropolis and they smash each other and the glass breaks like People were dying. No, yeah. comics don't cover that. Yeah, but I mean, again, I, th- I thought all that criticism was completely ridiculous. Like, you have a person who, like, th- you don't have the choice of moving the fight if someone decides to fight, have this brawl in the middle of New York. You're doing you Dragon Ball Z, though. Let me just say that real quick. That's Shut fair, up, but like, yeah. that, that was so dumb. And to Tim's point, <laughs> it was so. It's so visually cool to see that fight happen. To see what happens if these two behemoths start brawling in the middle of a fucking like the biggest city in the world. I thought I thought it was cool. I thought that all I the, just wish what that, happens like, if everyone dies. I'm like, well, bruises. what happens if yeah, yeah, a fucking yeah. bomb yeah. goes off? Like, how, and that's you know the what thing, I mean? Yeah. The, you can't the save everyone. doing what it does best, which is not commit. We're gonna do this, and we're gonna tell this. Well, we're not. We're gonna dial it back. We're not gonna have people get bruised. We're not gonna have people get fucked up. But we're gonna die. And like, so it is this thing of like again that. In, I'd be no really future int- spoilers. It sets up Batman v Superman in a very interesting way. Of like, I think it's cool. They're gods and we're playthings and we don't matter. I'd love We've to have been in the, like, oh, a fly in the wall in that writing room of just like, 
well, you know, I wonder if that point was but, ever brought up. Should no. we, should we, should they be bruised? Should they have some sort of yeah, yeah, you know oh. cuts and blood popping even out of their, I mean, their lip or whatever? To the simplest way, right? Even if it's in uh, Cal in particular, right? If Feora fucks him up and has a Kryptonian knife and cuts his face and they fucking brawl and he throws her down and she runs away and you know when her mask gets broken and he l- does one of these at the sun and he just goes. Shoo- and like heels, right? Like oh, you cool, can man. get around it yeah. and be like, "Why he still looks like Henry Cavill for the rest but, of the movie?" Like you, th- earlier we said that the the alien ship little floaty guy cut him. Yeah. So it's like, oh, so they've totally. already introduced that, totally. but they for yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter at all. Small little fight happens. They bomb the fucking street. We're gonna move quick here, everybody. That happens. We get the great thing. Uh, good this death is, is its own reward. And Malone, when Maloney pulls out his knife and she pulls out her knife, what a fucking awesome. scene! He oh, goes, yeah. Superman smashes in, takes her out. Uh, he throws the big guy uh, who uh, non, non, but like not non, non, you know what I mean? Whatever. Throws the train in. They explode. He gets hit in the bank. Pharaoh's mask gets broken. She's like, oh, all these cool powers. Why? Oh my god. This seems like How? if I just Why waited five minutes, I could. Why is only my strength the only power I have? Yeah. Whatever. Fucking movies. This the tiny gravity, town is just decimated. Gravity, ten times stronger than <laughs> Kryptonite. Or Krypton. So that gives her super strength? Yeah. She gets Okay. Yeah. To the same strength he has. Superman. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> they bug out. The, all the army dudes move into the bank. Superman moves the train. And he comes out and they all put down their guns. And then Maloney walks out and he's like, this man is not our enemy. What a fucking scene. Love a it. scene. It's this good. is a collection of great scenes that the rest of it ruins. Doesn't matter, right? Uh, they We bounce back up to Zod's uh, hangar base up there, and, and the dude's like, man, this has been a fucked... Oh, and Zod actually... Again, you want me to fucking... Uh, you want our children to have to adapt? Zod just goes off wherever and sits there for five minutes, looks at him, he's like, I got it. I'm yep, adapted. Yep, Don't worry. Figured it out. He bounced back <laughs> upstairs. He's like, oh, yo, what's going on? They're like, yo, listen, up, the, the codex was never in there. It's in his blood. We got it. Do we need his fucking... Does he need to be alive for this? No. Fucking release the world engine. And I was like, oh. fucking... Not, not like how short the movie is, but knowing how many more plot points we had, I was like, <laughs> really? We're releasing the world... Sure enough, we released the world engine. One side Indian Ocean, one side Metropolis coming down. They get there, they sandwich this world. You know what I mean? They are Eiffel Towering the Earth right now. Yep. Yeah. Just like Huxable, Hux- 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 Clip Huxable with the fucking whatever, whatever he was exactly. That was a different reference. Oh, Andy, pie. that was an hour and two hours and 19 minutes Jesus ago. Right. Different reference. Uh, and they start, boo, 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 and they're just smashing everything. And the Daily Planet people hang out way too long. They see it happen, they're like, oh man, should we fucking move? I don't know. The Daily Planet people from this moment on is just like... Useless. Not only useless, it's like, oh, you're making this movie worse. You shouldn't be here. Yeah. You surviving. You being the only people there. Uh, Every scene you're in, stupid Again, it's, and, and again, again it's, though, but the scene, and I, maybe I'm out on my own in this one, the scene I really do personally love, and maybe it's my personal connection to... Perry, uh, the guy whose name I keep forgetting, and now Jenny, who at the time we thought might be Jimmy. Like, I really do appreciate that one scene of them in the alley when she's like, don't leave me, don't leave me. Yeah. He's like, no, and they try to get her on, they can't, and they do the, yeah. like, it's uh, all, like the Toy that. Story, right? Like, we're all in a die. Yeah, like, but it's like, uh, well, someone, but again, I'm not, somebody I'm has again. to be a sympathetic character in this. You have to feel for someone in this. Otherwise, you do just get white noise of punching, but, punching, but, punching. But, but they don't build up to that. They don't build up to Dude, that I just well said, I'm, like t- the, I'm literally with you. No, like, I'm great like scenes. Yeah, only they had set up that she was claustrophobic and doesn't want to get crushed by a, you know, alien. Dude, that's scary. I am not at all. Uh, it's, it's fine. Scary. I think it was, we all 100 percent know what this fine. is. This is all piggybacking off our own fears and 9/11 reactions. And mm-hmm. I'm not even making a Greg joke mm-hmm. about this. No, like, no, 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 yeah. It is very much like when they run down the street and it's all happening. Like that's the footage we've all seen before. But it's like, let me see people around them dying. Then, like, don't just have three people in an alley. Yeah, the, dude, the I'm not the only people in this city at this point. It's yeah, fucking it's, weird. It's, and it's, it's all the, the whole sequence is weird because the movie wants to pretend like you care about these people at this point, where you're like invested in what they're doing and it's just like I've spent maybe two minutes with these people before this scene yeah and that's the main problem this entire movie it's literally doing exactly what I'm talking about with the no kill rule yeah it's saying like cool we are using cliff notes cheat sheets of this is Perry this is Lois this is Jimmy if it's not Jimmy it's Jimmy but you you know what I mean like you are dropped into this world and you know those relationships without having to do it this is the end of Prometheus I don't care about these people on the ship they should all die they're dumb dumb fucks (laughs) anyways the boom boom that starts right and like they start destroying it literally block by block pretty quickly jump cut (laughs) 
<laughs> back to NORAD, where Lois is like, we think we figured out a thing. And like, what are we going to do? We have this thing. We can... Jor-El told me, by the way, up in the thing, we can world engine it. Blah. And they're having this long discussion in NORAD in real time, apparently, that is happening while Metropolis is just being iced. Pounded. Just destroyed. Just fucking pounded, pounded like a gangbang. <laughs> and so, yeah, that they lo- Maloney, Black.com, Maloney yeah. is like, you know what? Again, load it up. We can do it. We can put it in the thing. God. We can go do the thing. Let's go do the thing. Uh, Superman's like, I'll go to the Indian Ocean. I'll destroy that fucking thing. And Lois is like, if it's if the atmosphere is more like Krypton, won't you be weaker there? And he's like, yeah, you'd think so, but that didn't happen in the ship. What happened to me harder. in the ship, but it doesn't happen. I don't know. I'm going to go do that. Forget Lo. everything you know. Forget Clark. everything you know. I love you. I'll <laughs> no talk to you later. The, the only thing that I could use to explain this. this is there's one line where Jarrell says, you won't know how strong you are until you test yourself. And we do get that moment. But like this is, this is probably the most disappointing thing to me in this whole movie. The world engine part? The world engine part, which is that they don't give him all they ever give him him like to do is to just punch shit harder. You, you ruin he doesn't ever have to fucking over like think at all in this I movie. Remember, I'll never forget seeing this movie and then talking to you about it and this might have even been kind of funny like years and years ago but you ruining it for me not in the way because obviously I think there's plenty of problems with this movie but me not thinking it this way where you were like his solution to everything is punch harder yeah. and that doesn't work and it you watch sucks. this movie and you're like right Jorel gave Lois the answer. The Lois the answer. And Clark's Wait. whole thing We just crossed the runtime of the movie. Good. God damn it. You knew we would. Oh, guys, strap in for Batman v Superman. But, but can you we... think I'm taking any shortcuts around that? I'm wearing I'm di- bringing Jolly Ranchers. I'm going to bass lift me up. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, Jolly Ranchers, why? The peach tea. You'll thing. see. No spoilers. You don't no spoilers. remember. Oh, that's totally yeah. different. I'll You're bring right. some peach tea, too. Oh, Grandma's no. peach tea. God, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, are we still going or you want to talk more about that? No, we're still going. <laughs> All right, great. So, yeah, let's just get it over, right? Over in the Indian Ocean, a fucking spider thing is the defensive mechanism for this. This whole fight, you're like, why is this what happening? What the fuck is happening? Why is this Stupid. going on? Okay, whatever. So long. Clark's spinning around. He's fighting the thing. Of course, he grabs him and just, like, flicks him into the fucking beam. And this is, yeah, Nick's thing of that was for me of, like, punch harder. Right. Where he's down, he's like, I'm beaten. You know what? I'm not beaten. I'm yeah. Superman. And I was like, oh. He holdo it. Huh? He holdo it. Holdo. Hold the just door. Went no. Right, no, 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 no. I think no, that's hold it. Oh, oh Last Jedi. Yes. She went right through it real yeah. fast. I, yeah. Hold the door? No. This needed... <laughs> see, so for me, this needed a... We're going to get another flashback. Someone's going to tell him something that really helped, that triggers a thing that gives him the opportunity to over If you're ever on your back, or use push your legs. This, this is, like, th- th- is going to be the far <laughs> from our, uh, homecoming moment of them telling Peter, you know, Peter hearing, right. you know, got, Peter, you got this shit, bro. Whatever like, the have faith in yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. But instead, yeah, he, he, homecoming, I, mean, I don't remember that. Instead, he just no, stands he just, up like, and the music swells and it's totally vapid. It is a totally vapid moment where he pushes through this thing. If that was going to be the case, just have him fucking right off the bat. Just go yeah, right through it. Yeah. yeah. Just right there. Exactly. And that would have made more sense for why Metropolis is totally destroyed. It doesn't matter. He does that. It falls down. Uh, back on the other side, though, was the whole uh, scene we were talking about Jenny uh, with Perry, with the guy from Dawn of the Dead. Well, sorry. To, to contrast that, yeah, you're right. We have this other scene where all these humans who are fallible, who can die very easily, are trying to figure out how to outsmart this fucking thing that's pushing their missiles away with gravity. And it's totally cool and freaky and scary. And, and they're like, just we just destroyed. need to figure out how to get this bomb to this thing. It's a simple process, but there's actually stakes. People are flying out of the fucking thing. Yeah. Lois the is like, like don't go are back there. Around. The other ships are coming. And you're like, that's cool. And then contrast that, he's like. In in the cargo plane with the thing, they're on approach or whatever. And it's, they can't activate the spaceship. The and, and it doesn't work. Like, oh, and, Lo- and Lois is like, it's what I'm not supposed to do this. Blah, blah. And they're like arguing about it, and then like uh, again, Guardian, love this great reference to the comics of Maloney being Guardian, just calling himself Guardian, driving it home that he's Guardian. Um, I have no idea what you're talking about, and you kept calling him Guardian this whole time, and I was like, that's a weird nickname. Did you notice him. that he his call sign is Guardian? Guardian, yeah. Mm. So There's, what's the, Guardian? Guardian's a character in the DC uh, U that is it becomes very important during the Death and Return of Superman. Mm. Once Superman dies, he takes back up the helm. He's basically a Captain America knockoff. He's in a blue and gold heads, and he's got a shield or whatever. Cool. Uh, so it's just like a cool nod. It's not a it, round shield, Captain though. Guardian. No, no, it's not. It's very lame. It wouldn't work anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but anyways, Maloney comes back there. What's going on? Blah blah. And like when the one guy's like this lame. You have to get away from... Feora comes up from Jesus the ground, right? Christ Kills that terrifying. dude, starts chasing everybody. There's a whole bunch of fights here, too. Uh, I think at this point, Zod was on approach to blow them up, too, right? And Superman knocked him off and crashed that ship. That'll right. be important later on. Remember that. Remember, it's landing pad for you. 
crashes down there. Uh, but that's that's an important moment because he's like, don't if you destroy this ship, you destroy oh, everything. Oh right, that sorry, I totally forgot that. And he looks at it, he goes, Krypton, Krypton had, had its chance. chance. Love that. Line. I love that line. Really, and then just line. fucking just lazes the shit out of this. Yeah. And you're like, why? Okay, that's cool. Fuck it, let's go. Yeah, love that. I but love there that was that moment where you, you sort of like, is he going to do this? Yeah, because he powers down. Really right, cool. his eyes are red, yeah. and then he goes, and then he goes back. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So then on the ship, Farrah kills everybody. Chases Maloney to the cockpit. Right. And at this point. Back in the thing, Emil does the thing and he like rotates it and slams the deal into it or whatever. It fires up. Yeah, Lois gets knocked out the back and then and then it was. You're right. A good death is its own reward. Let's mm-hmm. fucking go. Yeah. And it is that thing where and I it, like, again, you know, you know what? No future spoilers. Let's just enjoy the no, movie. No, no future spoilers. It's a cool. This is a cool moment. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. It's a fucking cool moment. Fucking Everyone starts getting sucked out of the other, fucking thing. Right, yeah. Lois is falling, Superman grabs her, he starts flying against the pressure of it. Too many close-ups, as we've already talked about. Only his face Another is Yeah, it's weird how his Another face was crash zoom on her face for what fucking reason? Did some, the editor's like, we just need something here. Because this scene, this is falling so much flat. B-roll. How about we just <laughs> <laughs> push it on her fucking face? Oh my god. But, he breaks free. World net, of course he all that sucked up. Of course he breaks free. Punch harder. Because fly when harder. He, yeah, he just has to fly harder. Simple. Let's get better, dude. Easy. Uh, he does another twirl landing in the ashes of, oh, guesstimate, five, 6,000 dead people. Yeah, easy. Uh, oh, him and Lois that. kiss. Yeah. Smells like Harry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they kiss. Uh, we try to get this weird speed moment here. Oh, uh, you know, they say it's all downhill once you have your first kiss. I think it only applies to humans. I'm an alien. Nah. And then everybody nah. walks over, and like Jenny, and she's like, "He saved us." And it's like they're close enough to realize that what that guy looks like. Yeah, and that's what that guy looks like. I'm not gonna remember. Yeah. I'm not gonna forget this formative moment this is in, in my, my life. mind forever. Interesting yeah. that none of them was like, "Let me take a picture of this shit." You know, this yeah, is this what is I do for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's literally my my job relies on me having a pretty good memory yeah. and be able to recall shit sometimes. Again, you know? Steve's Your job a sports reporter. He's got nothing to do with this. And Jenny, she's an intern. Apparently, Steve's so just so. out for that. That <laughs> never mind. Let's move yeah. on. Let's, uh, let's and then this is where go. we cut over. And guess what? There's Zod kneeling <laughs> in the ground doing the thing. I I have no people. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we're gonna fucking fight. They start fighting. So wait, this is a moment that maybe I just lost. Attention span at some, at some point, but like, why was he alive and everyone else got because he, got, he was on he the, was on the like, when when Kal-El knocked out the ship and did the lightning the lightning the heat vision that ship crashed and he took off Zod tra- wrote it down I, I assume trying to think he could save the yeah. baby he, in the back. he crashed but so everyone the, else that got sucked into the Phantom was zone. in the world engine it was in the and that was a, that was a contained effect it wasn't Kryptonians got it okay it was oh, like okay, if you're okay, in the okay, okay. the cool. vicinity of this smaller black hole so there's at least like 15 or 20 humans that got yeah, sucked yeah, in yeah, for sure. got sucked oh yeah they're all dead yeah including Chris Maloney he said he got sucked into although we don't know if they're dead or not because we don't really know what the Phantom Zone is well that's not a Phantom Zone that's a black hole Again, the cop on answer would have been, we're going to send you the Phantom Zone. That would have been cool. Because yeah. then they could have brought it. was a back. Phantom Engine that like made the yeah. black hole. So. Would have been awesome it's if Feora came back and was like a main character. I assure you. Could be. Would have been cool. I assure you. We don't know. Let's move on. Right now. Um, uh, people, and then they all start fighting. And so they all, they're, it's, it's Zod, it's Superman, they're fighting through the city, they're blowing up buildings, they're using heat vision, we get the gag of zero days without incident, they get fun. knocked out into space, Man, they hit no a way. Wayne satellite, Be- they come Be- back in. Before we get that, I love, I do love the scene, which I, I realize is the biggest annoying, annoyance for you, but I like the part where he's like, you grew up on a fucking farm, like, I, I, I have a person who's, who can master my and skills, he takes off all and his he gear. fucking rips off his gear and floats up, and he's just got, like, Again, that sleek black look to him, like, this is cool minutes. as shit. I mean, I know that's the dumbest thing yeah. ever, and yes, that is a massive fucking plot hole. Like, if you could be a god on this planet, why would you want to bring him back? Why it's also the thing of like I watching just, it with uh, Jen and Luce last night and knowing what's happening. And when they cut to the thing where the scene where he's about to bust out of their armor, they all they both went, "Why does the armor look so bad here?" I'm like, "Oh, he's about to pop out of it." Like, I don't know what they changed there for CG or if it was, I think prox- it was CG practical for that point or vice versa. Well I mean, th- th- there were scenes where it's close enough. At, it, Sort of close-up scenes sure, that we get, sure, right. we get the uh, the sort of Iron Man effect of like this mm. floating head and this like fake CG yeah. body. But yeah, I think we're such suckers for that because I'm such a sucker for uh, for different color schemes. Yeah, me so too. Me like, too. Fucking a, yes. like a different version of a Superman suit. It's like, oh, that's rad. So cool. <laughs> and he's just like, and he looked good in it. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Dark blue to it's, black. It's cool. badass though. So they keep <laughs> brawling, they're blowing up the city, fighting all the stuff. Anybody who wants to do any of your uh, action stuff, feel free to nah, stop I'm me. Just keep going. No, cool. So they dumb. fight. They're in space. They're out of space. They're doing this shit's falling down they eventually brawl into basically their uh grand central terminal uh people are still there trying to get on trains i don't know what the fuck you're thinking like you just get underneath the benches go hide in the toilets you know what i'm saying <laughs> i'm like, not afraid to be a toilet toad when the knee i mean these are new yorkers though man they're like oh, the thing's they're done not, we gotta go back to work people. we gotta go back to work anyways toilet they, toad 
Don't worry about it. <laughs> Andy, you're going to sit there with a straight face. Tell me you've never gone to a Greyhound bus station about a toilet toad. <laughs> I want proof that any human being out there has watched two hours, 31 minutes of this. Please tweet at Tim Gettys, Toilet Toad, just to prove that someone got this yeah. far. Okay, yeah, thank you. Right now, live Twitch watchers, I know you're there, you fucking Toilet Toads. 600 of them still there. Andy, when you get back Why? to your desk, cancel the Cotton Funny not. podcast, make a Toilet Toad shirt. All right. I'm thinking, like, grab by the ghoulies, but it's a Toilet Toad. <laughs> Do you know what grabbed by the ghoulies? I know the ghoulies. <laughs> the ghoulies came out of the toilets, right, Greg? We were yeah, old. I remember, I remember we ghoulies. Were, old. we're fucking old. Yeah. Oh, fuck. They crash into Grand Central. <laughs> We've already talked about this two hours ago about the whole, like, it only ends one way. I'm dead. You're dead. Whatever. And yeah, he's yeah. like, oh, you love these people so much. I'm going to fucking bake them. I'm going to easy bake oven them with my eyes or whatever. And Superman's like, no, don't do it. Whatever. And he's like, he's doing it real slow. <laughs> giving him no choice. And like we said, he could have just looked. He why not fly <laughs> up? Why not burrow yeah. His brain with your own heat vision, it doesn't fucking matter. When he gets right close to the shitbag family, you know what? He breaks his neck. Yeah. And again, great it. scene. Breaks the neck, he drops, ah, drops to his knees, Lois comes down, takes care of him. You hate it? I, I hate that he killed him. I think it's lazy writing. I think it. it but do you sets like the a, scene? That's what I'm saying. The, the, scene, said. the no, performances. I, no? I, I mean, I think the performance. I think his performance is the best in this scene that is the whole movie. But the fact that they let this happen to me was just such a fucking dumb choice. It sets a bad precedent. It puts it. It puts this whole series on a course that it just didn't need to be at. Sure. And it's lazy writing. Like well, you have a fucking. You couldn't have had figured out a better way to have this whole thing culminate with as they're fighting in the sky, as this scene's happening, the world engine stuff's happening over there. Why was that two separate things? You want to. Talk about a, a, an exciting two planes of action. Fuck the other world engine thing where he had to punch through it. It's him fighting Zod while Lois Lane is trying to, to put the bomb in the thing. And as that's happening, he punches him into the fucking thing. And that's yeah. it. We're done. He didn't I, have to kill anyone. He outsmarted them. He had to coordinate with his other smart character to do it. That's how you end this fucking to be movie. The, to be the Greg Miller you expect me to be, it also could have totally paid off if that he kills Zod and that's the moment. Because that happened in the comics post-crisis. He used Kryptonite to kill some Kryptonian villains. And it was literally one of those things like, that fucks Superman up. Yeah. And he's like, I will never kill again. I can't do that. Blah, blah. Mm. If we could have had that repercussion from it. And it, again, no future spoilers, but let's say somebody shows up from Gotham City next time and they're like, you're a fucking murderer all the time. Yeah. If he, yeah, no he could have been like, it. no, no, you're right, I am, and I, but I, I'm not that anymore, there's a cool dynamic. Yeah, but to me, I mean, I'm old school, right? There's there's an old school screenwriting like law where it's like there's just, just a couple inexcusable things you can have a character do, and murder just happens to be one of them. Murder is something you cannot get away with. Now, I know it's self really? defense, but you it's, love bad boys. Again, they murdered uh, that's a, a lot of people. That's a different people. kind of. That's a different kind of murder. I'm talking about like the actual act of being confronted with the situation. Of, do I kill? Do I not kill? Have that be a moralistic thing, and you snap someone's neck. It just, to me, makes that character different forever. It can never come back. He can never be pure again. There's no matter what he does, with he has committed guys? this. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Isn't with, that only with, true with like not bad guys? Potentially, but Superman's always been that. Thing right, but he's in, always in never the, killed because that is a line you cannot cross. In the Once comic. you cross that line, and we've we've known this about Superman forever, you, there's no coming back, and now there's no coming back. So here's the thing, from my perspective, we didn't know it forever. I didn't know much about Batman or Superman going into this movie. So like him doing this, I know that as a Batman it, thing. It, yeah. I knew it as a Batman thing. So it's like having not much knowledge of Superman and like never being drilled home like he doesn't kill. It's like this guy's a fucking bad guy. Like. Why wouldn't you? I, and, I, and again, I'm not trying to make light of any real world situations, but especially for the imagery they're using and everything else, and da 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 da, to get to that situation. And like, if I was there with Osama bin Laden, like you know, post 9 11 and all these things, let alone the fact that it was so much smaller than the thing they're dr they're drumming up, but clearly what they're pulling from. Like I, I maybe I'm just a psychopath, which obviously there's a plot of internet copy to prove I am. Yeah. But I would not be like, oh, I can't kill this guy. Like, okay. I want to fucking but kill this guy. The difference is this: Please you are not an all powerful god. Right, but the he all, is too, though. Yeah, fair. But imagine this—that family over there that was like, "This is terrifying," and I just saw you snap someone's neck. Now you're capable of snapping people's fucking neck like that. The, I think for fair. Superman, that line was so unbelievably important because that was his humanity. He doesn't kill. He's not willing to do that. He will sacrifice himself. And I realize that, yeah, they put the stakes here, but this whole scene just feels so fucking off. I want to again, again, it goes, it goes to back. piggyback off the rest of the DCEU, let alone the next movie. I think like there's such an interesting thing. Remember leading up to Batman v Superman before I knew everybody in the world would hate it and want to kill it. it it was that argument of like they've planted interesting seeds in that first trailer of like what what the growth would be of what you're talking about really right of like 
I mean, Holly Hunter's line from the trailers in the future spoilers. Those like, trailers right, are we're so hung up on what Superman can do. We haven't asked him what he should do, right? Like, there's a really interesting thread there that I don't think, with all due respect, Zack Snyder was prepared to handle with the need it needs to be to then make a whole fucking universe. Also, Jurassic Park, uh, Goldblum line. It's it's a, a perfect mm. example of this, I guess, is what, like, in Bad Boys, <laughs> Bad Boys isn't that kind of movie that's trying to be grounded in reality. We don't believe any of this shit. This, this is like a surreal movie. It was just dumb action film, right? In this, they're trying to make this character a little bit more well-rounded, and I think this is just a line that they shouldn't cross. It, it, it feels... Just as bad as Batman killing, because you do know that Batman doesn't kill, because every fucking thing you've ever seen is he goes, that's a line I won't cross, because that makes me one of them. I don't use guns. I don't use guns. I don't kill people, because if I do, he's scared of what that will turn him into. In this, it just was like, you should be better than that, man. Like, if you've gotten to this point where you 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 have to snap this guy's neck, you've already fucking lost. You're Superman. This is the best you could do, was snap a guy's neck? I'm sorry, man. It's I think it's just lazy writing. I mean, I, I feel like... In in the comics, like in, in like the Zod thing, like does happen. He has to kill Zod, right? Or at least in Kryptonian some Kryptonian villains. Yeah. It was before Zod. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of those things where it's like he then carries that guilt for a long time. And which like, is yeah. what I, when I did it this would in be the movie, cool, that's what. And I was like, oh, that's what they're gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. And what do they do? They do not. Everybody, he kills Zod. Lois comforts him for all of five minutes, and then he goes back to Martha. I need to get a job. Where I, I hope Dad's proud of me. They're at the fu- the gravesite. <laughs> Dad's all this not proud. Stuff. You killed a man. Dad, you murdered Dad man. didn't know if you're gonna be good or bad. So you know, you're you know at least fifty one percent good. That's good enough by your dad's standards. Um, also, did you say any dogs? Cold. Just choke him out. He was like this the whole fucking time. He's like, okay, it's I easy got for you. Bro. You have training. You, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. When Tim and I roll around, we're just playing tummy sticks. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 tummy, tummy sticks. Tummy sticks. <laughs> I don't want to know. I think it's an tummy. erection thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. But I mean, even Manscaped. that. Manscaped.com. <laughs> a, <perfect, laughs> a perfect example. Like, I know that they needed that big <laughs> moment. Throwing an ad name in there doesn't make it better. <laughs> also, go like, ahead and also, tweet at Tim Tummy Sticks. <laughs> tummy Sticks. Hold on, go to Tummy Sticks if I'm already in it. Toilet Toads and Tummy Sticks. Tummy Sticks is from uh, Wedding Crashers. Is Remember? it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like, knew I knew play, it. T- let's play Tummy Sticks. He's like, I don't want to play Tummy Sticks. I don't want to play Tummy Sticks. I'm going to play Tummy Sticks. That's the first thing, Wedding Crashers. Let's play Tummy Sticks. I don't want to play Tummy Sticks. Man. Yep, I was right. Tommy Sticks is a situation commonly referred to as a game in which two erect men cuddle closely yep. face-to-face, Tommy sticks. causing two erect penises or sticks to push upwards between their stomachs. We've done that before. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Jonathan, uh, you're dead. I hope I, I'm wearing this Henley and I look great. Uh, this is cool. I'm going to get a job, Mom. It needs to be somewhere I can keep my ear close to the ground. Blah, blah, blah. It's him riding the bike. It's him with the tie. Him walking the Daily Planet. He's the new stringer. He's going to work here. Everybody welcomes him. Lois and him have the connection in the eyes. What's a stringer? Stringer's like uh, you fill in the gaps. You're, you don't. It's like you don't have a beat, mm. which is one of the things that really, honestly, you want to talk about things that piss me off about Batman v Superman when people are like, "Oh, he works with a paper and they just give him random shit." I'm like, "No, that's a real job. I've I worked that job. No, and not he didn't have as much lead time. It doesn't matter." The, uh, other, the other dumb thing is that we're in a fucking. Do you think he went we're to in a fucking that, massive. We're, we're in now, right? If that made Great sense. <laughs> <laughs> that, that made sense when you were um, 1950s, 1960s before fucking satellites and the internet. But now he's got access to everything. And like, you would think like, my brain goes like this. You're working an eight hour day. Do you know how many fucking people around the world you could be of saving course. in eight hours? Sure. Like, go up to space, do the thing that Brandon Routh there where you close your fucking eyes and you hear people and you go, oh, I'm going to say that person there. Boom. Brandon Routh still works a job though, you know. What's that? Brandon Routh still had a job. Clark Kent. He wore tight pants too. Yeah. Uh, we skipped the thing with the, we already talked about drone on the ground, $12 million, blah, blah, blah. I think he's hot. I'm hungry, man. <laughs> We're going to eat in two seconds. If you just shut the fuck yeah, up, man, I'll ahead. land the plane. I'm there. You know what I mean? Uh, he does the thing. I like where he got in the elevator and took his glasses off real quick in a hurry. And then, yeah, you know, I'll, you know, Clark Kent, Lois Lane, welcome to the planet. <laughs> Smile. Uh, 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 Into the movie. Funny. Cool. Haiku and review. Seven syllables <laughs> in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku and review. Haiku in review. Tummy stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form, just like Tristan cool Benz did. Really Henry Cavill's bod. That's it. That's the whole haiku. Kneel before Zod, fool. Uh, Mason Hall says, had high hopes for this. Trailer song choice had me hyped. I feel bamboozled. <laughs> uh, Ignacio Rojas says, basing Man, on, Man of Steel on Nolan's Batman didn't work. Where are the colors? Um... Edward T says they should be suing. Metropolis, a ruin. How much will it cost? <laughs> Everything. Uh, Chan says, well, this is the start. Snyder's Passion of the Christ. Superman Jesus. <laughs> uh, Jason says, Man of Steel is rad. Who destroy all of Metro? Why Man destroy? Of, uh, why destroy 
All of Metro, Man of Steel is rad. <laughs> Not really creative on that <laughs> yeah. one. Uh, Just use the same honest. line. Yeah. Things happen. Stuff go. Movie <laughs> published. Chase Winters says, human side built up on Superman. They slip up. Send Clark for the pup. I love that and one. That's a good one. That was real good. That was real good. Super bad What's up, everybody? Welcome to Super Red Guys Talk Bad Guys. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside my co-host, Kevin Coelho. Woo. Andy Cortez and Tim Geddes. Wow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to rank the bad guys in the DCEU. If you're paying attention at home for my list, this is volume seven. I know some have happened while I was gone. Uh, where do we want to rank Zod? Wait, wh- I'm I sorry, mean, what? He's number one right now. What? Because he doesn't include. I'm not on every not on. show. Got it, got it. So got I it. have volume seven on my oh, phone. Oh, got it. I thought. I thought. I don't know. I thought we were adding him to an array. <laughs> no, no, like, we're not. Too, we learned our lesson there. Wait, wait. We but he, he, he's the only one. So he's he goes number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, 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 he's the bad guy's though. I didn't like Zod. I didn't what? like Zod at all. I thought Matt, Michael Shannon's awesome, and yeah. I think that him acting in a lot of the lines he had were great. But I feel like so many of his good lines had weird moments of like, why did you repeat this ten fucking times? Yeah. You know, it's like I you killed that. it the first time, you killed it the second time. I'll even say you killed it the third time. But like Jesus, it's what we're talking about with the movie. Scenes are great. Overall, or it's like even Zod's mo- like his introduction, right? Of like, hey, Jor-El, we're on the same page that Krypton's on the wrong track. Join me. Like, I like that part. But it's, <coughs> it's like we we're talking about earlier, right? Of like in the head moment, like I'm a villain. I'm a villain. I'm a bad guy. I'm a bad guy to be a bad guy. I'm a bad guy. And that's what I don't like about this is because from the introduction, I feel like this <laughs> movie is like presented to us as if it's a bit more artful, as if it's a bit more grounded. And it's like, we're going to do different things with Superman. We're going to make it a bit more real. We're going to focus a lot there on, are more stakes. on the yeah. alien side of it from the human perspective of immediately the question's not like, oh, what can he do to save us? It's what's he going to do to hurt us? And oh my God, I'm scared of you. And even with him being a little kid, like all the flashbacks and stuff, I feel built into that. And then there's just a comic book villain that yeah. from the first scene to the last scene, he's like, I'm the source of the problems, and could've... I'm telling you what the problems are. And like my reasoning for these problems, like we're so spoiled by Thanos, and I get that, yeah. but like we are, you know, it's like, and Thanos I feel like made sense. Thanos isn't the only example of that. I just feel like there's so many Making other other sense. things where you're just like, okay, cool. Making this guy made sense. This, man. And that's the thing is, I know I'm 100 percent with you that it's there's so many different things happening in this movie that the fact that Zod isn't more nuanced, the fact that when you know his cronies and Feyora show up for the first time, and you're like, well, you're clearly bad. There's no, there's no wiggle room for you. You are a bad well, person. They start with a terrorist video, you right? Know? Yeah, it's like, yeah. All right, cool. All like, yeah, why not come in and do it a more Lex Luthery of, I am a good guy and I am a good thing and we're from a different, you know, civilization and we're looking for one of our lost children. And more importantly, I recovered the Ragu Bagu Vids account. So you Wait, can, it was lost? Uh, the password, I got a new phone, oh, all this sure, stuff. Sure. But uh, it is now up and running at Ragu Bagu Vids on Twitter. What's the password? Six nine six nine. Yeah. That's what it is. Anyway, there we go. Cool. That's right, go back. That's right, go back. Great. Now it's time to rank Man of Steel. It's number one. Yeah. Done. Rewatching this, I guess I've been saying multiple times in this, I was pleasantly surprised. I am As very interested I. to see if this falls from number one for me. Yeah? That's my man. You think so too? You're excited. You're, you're pleasantly surprised by this. Batman v Superman. Maybe. Wise. Hey, I'm going in open. Like I, I'm also understanding of what these movies are, but like yeah. I don't. I think, think that's a big part of it. I don't, I don't think I've seen a single DC movie <laughs> more than once. Any of these? Okay. I've never seen the what's it called? Ultimate Cut? Yeah, Ultimate Edition. No, no one has Ultimate Edition. No, I've seen it multiple times. Yeah, I've never seen. This will be I've my seen, ninth I'll, viewing of Batman v Superman. No, Jesus, oh, fucking. My a lot third of people viewing of oh, no fourth viewing of Ultimate Cut. So the ultimate cut? Do we have access to that one? Is that the one that we should? Uh, that's what that's we'll what Tim says. Okay, but, uh, I'll we'll buy it for you. If not, I'll give you the money. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Here's my credit card. Buy it right now. <laughs> so yeah, that's my, my ultimate story. cut is your homework, everybody. Yeah. Anyone else have anything final thoughts on this? This movie is that that a great movie. <laughs> do Do you think that it's gonna? What do you think this is gonna fall at the end of the day? <sighs> Down the list. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, I here's the thing is like, and I'm going off. I mean, you're talking about like this whole run of DCEU, right? Yeah. I mean, like, don't I? I, I think the popular opinion is way more in Wonder Woman's camp, right? Is number one. I would think uh, even Shazam. I think a lot of people make a case for being number one. I think it'll be he middle of the road. Like way, I think it'll be middle of the road, especially when I think about how Justice League made me feel and how Suicide Squad made me feel. I, I think it'll be sort of middle of the pack. I don't know what that means, and I don't want to know. I like it. <laughs> yeah, my personal, I, th- I think it'll be higher, actually. I think that Wonder Woman's going to be number one. I think this should be higher, because the thing is, this movie has a lot of faults to it. We've obviously been very critical of it, but it tried to do such cool shit that no, none of the other movies yeah. try to do. How yeah. many movies are there? 18. Seven. 
Seven. Okay, so just based on what people, I, I've never seen uh, Aquaman. I've never seen Sh- Shazam. But oh God, apparently they're not very good movies, but they're fun. And, and that's, they were that's, that's fun. what sort of appeals to me, I right? I'm a big Shazam Ragnarok a fan. I'm, I'm a big uh, Guardians of the Galaxy fan. When there's humor. Uh, and and it's well done. I enjoy those. Your poor little what? heart. Yeah, I was gonna say, poor it's little not heart. like that. It's not <laughs> that Aquaman kind of. Fun. Is, it's very colorful. We'll put it Aquaman that way. is an action movie, and like that's a, a funny action that, movie. Now, in, 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 real story, like it, imagine it, they're trying to make a bad movie and they nailed it. That's my thing. Is like <laughs> in, in general, in how I am about action movies, like I just don't care. So like when I left Aquaman, I was like, I just <clears> did not care. Like I wouldn't have gone and seen this movie if it wasn't for DC. We'll see. Yeah, I'll say this is this will rank number four. Overall, I'll say, this, I'll say this ranks number three overall. Shit. God, that's really sad. Two. Okay. Two, is, two is my other guess. Yeah? Mm. Wow. Yeah. That, that sounds right. Two Until three. next week. L- live life. What? Come on. There's so many good Superman lines you can throw in there, right? <laughs> uh, Turn it up, Jimmy. It means, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> <laughs>